I am happy to have Automotive Seminars as a sponsor for the show. Now, if you're not familiar, Automotive Seminars is a diagnostic technician training company. They've got a website that there'll be a link to in the show notes. And what they offer is top-notch training to technicians like us in the field. I've been taking their training courses for years and have got a ton of benefit out of it. They've got top-notch instructors, John Thornton, Scott Shotton, Scott Manna, and every other month, they've got a two-night course that you can sign up for. Join in, ask questions, and afterwards, you've paid for the course, you can access a recorded version whenever you want. You can rewatch the class two years later in case you wanted some details on it. And that is a fantastic feature. So make sure to check out the website to see what courses they have available and what's coming up in the future. This podcast is brought to you by Jarhead Diagnostics. Jarhead Diagnostics manufactures in-house diagnostic equipment and storage solutions, as well as distributes for companies like Pico, ATS, and Topdon. One of my favorite tools that I have bought from Brandon and Jarhead Diag is the case for the U-Scope. If you don't have a U-Scope, you probably should, but if you have one, you got to get one of these 3D printed cases, has a magnet on it, has a full-size BNC lead that you can connect to, and it gets rid of the weak point of that scope, which is the mini BNC connection, which is pretty fragile. This case makes this thing nice and secure and makes it an even better tool than it was. So check out jarheaddiag.com. The link is in the show notes. This episode is brought to you by L1 Automotive Training and Keith Perkins. If you're looking for education on module programming, J2534, EEPROM work, key and immobilizer, electrical diagnostics or drivability diagnostics, Keith has a website, l1training.com, that's got over 60 hours of training videos on all those subjects and more. When I first started out doing mobile, I utilized Keith's videos on module programming in J2534 in order to get my head wrapped around what I would need for the tooling, the computers, the software setups, you know, what kind of obstacles I would be up against when I'm out there programming modules on cars. And it was a huge benefit to me. And I continue to use the training videos um, that he has on his website. So I strongly recommend checking out l1training.com. We have got Auto Rescue Tools and Isaac Rodell as a sponsor for this podcast. Hey guys, if you're looking for programming laptops, you want the laptop set up ready to go for programming control modules on vehicles, you need key cutting equipment, you need diagnostic tools, Isaac is your guy. Has all that stuff available for purchase and the support that he offers along with the purchase has been outstanding. I bought some stuff from him in the past. I got my Dolphin key cutting tool from him several years back. And again, the support has been phenomenal. Helped me out along the way with anything additional I needed to make it work for me. Also for the month of June, 2023, they've got Autel updates for sale. So make sure to check that out as well. Again, that's autorescuetools.com. The link will be in the show notes. Welcome to the Automotive Diagnostic Podcast. We're going to explore ways to sharpen our diagnostic skills, find learning resources, and hear from experts in the automotive field. Hello, auto, automotive world. Welcome to the Automotive Diagnostic Podcast. My name is Natalie, and I'll be your host today. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. Uh, that was my goddaughter. She wanted to be on the show, and so I had to do the introduction. Um, 
Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to another episode of the Automotive Diagnostic Podcast. Today on the show, I am joined by Tommy Oliva. You should be pretty familiar with Tommy. He's been on the show a few times. And then also Brian Mann, who's not been on the show before. But Brian is a mobile technician out of Ohio. Um, he's been doing this for a very long time. Uh, he's very knowledgeable about uh, the mobile world and uh, everything that goes into it and what it takes to run a successful mobile business. And that's what we're going to be talking about with both Tommy and Brian is some of the good things that they've done that has made them successful at mobile. Uh, maybe some of the things that didn't do quite right, but we've uh, you know figured out along the way. And uh, just tips in general to be successful in this line of work. And I know we've been talking a lot about the mobile uh, side of things, uh, you know, for a technician that works in a shop, maybe some of this doesn't apply, but uh, really, really interesting stuff. I mean, obviously I find it interesting because I do it, um, but I think some of the other things can apply to uh, people in a shop too. Um, if nothing else, you get a different perspective on the industry. Uh, one other note before we get into it, Brian does have a training website that like everybody to check out. It's handsonautotraining.com. I'll include a link in the show notes, but we'll talk a little bit about it in the episode as well uh, so you can get the details there. Oh, hey, one more thing I just wanted to let everybody know. There are some curse words uh, in this talk. Of course, uh, you know, that happens from time to time, but I just wanted to make everyone aware in case you got any little ones around or in the car. Uh, there is some foul language. So you have been warned, but uh, without it, but with that out of the way, let's jump in. Yeah, that's. I, I had a good time with that. Uh, learning, learning is a fun part. That's what I'm actually putting together in my little video right now because, um, you know, um, you want to hear something funny, I'll tell you something funny. And <laughs> sometimes I, I do a lot of the same jobs over and over again. Uh, Chrysler, WCMs, Chrysler PCMs, uh, Fords, GMs. Sometimes I find myself almost looking at the... <laughs> Uh, whatever indicator light, you know, uh, the theft light or the check engine light saying, and sure. I, I want it to go out. Okay. But also I got this part of me. Come on, come on. Give me, give me a challenge here. Go, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and stay on. Cause this is getting, you know, I mean, I do the same thing. I mean, I, some of these jobs, you know, you, I do 20 of the same job a week and it just gets old. And, and sometimes I'm just like, ah, come on, especially the Chrysler theft light. Come on, stay on. Or, you know, come on, stall, stall, start and stall, start. Oh man, it started. Okay. Well, I got to hurry up and get the money and get out of here. So that's what I do. But, <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, that's that's being mobile. You have to be quick on your feet and get out of there. But um, I find myself doing more and more of that because I've been doing this for it's yeah 11 years now. And, you know, sure. a lot of the stuff is the same, but also a lot of stuff changes. I mean, it's a lot of keeping up and learning. Um, I think I, you're in it. Uh, you know, you're part of that group chat that or whatever group thing. And uh -huh. uh, just today at a Chrysler or a Dodge Promaster City with the TCM job, man. I mean, I quoted a certain price because that's generally my Chrysler price. Well, turned out I had to update the TCM, then I had to update the PCM, then I had to do a, um, I think it was a BCM proxy alignment, uh, or you know, for the TCM module. Then I had okay. to do TCM VIN, VIN verification. Then I had to do uh, <laughs> TCM solenoid uh, relearn, so it relearns the solenoid body, which took a little while. And then I had to do the uh, reset to adapts, and then I had to go do a quick learn. So by the time it was all said and done, I had a lot of time into this vehicle, and I didn't I didn't properly quote for it. To be honest with you, the next one I do, I'm going to add more to that price because I, I personally feel it's worth it. But in the same sense, I had issues with my Y Tech. For, sometimes Y Tech can be finicky. It, I mean, uh -huh. I don't know if you ever have issues where it just glitches and it's like, oh, you got to just go out and go back in and. Um, also multiple of those procedures that I just went over said you had to have a two minute or actually it said, wait for the TCM to shut down, like, you know, go offline, okay. uh, go to sleep before you go to the next step. And I'm the type of guy usually, okay, fine. A minute or two. I mean, I, I'll try it, uh, not doing it before I'll do it. I'll <laughs> sure. wait till it don't work. And then I'll, I'll be like, oh man. And of course the little drive lights blinking. I'm like, man, that thing, it was two minutes. Well, I ended up having to pull a scan tool off and shut the door wait two minutes or two and a half minutes and then plug it back in. So, I mean, it was just oh, a okay. large, it was a big job. By the time I was done, I think I was there almost two hours, man. And it's like, Ooh, the amount, well, I mean, you know, it just doesn't see it. you gotta, you gotta be careful what you wish for, right? You, you want that light to stay on, but then sometimes it ruins your whole day when that light won't turn on. Oh off. yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I want the light to stay on when I know how to fix it. How about that? That, that, that makes it okay. easy. <laughs> 
<laughs> I got gotcha. you. That, that changes it all up. I mean, it's when I, I mean, I like learning. I like a challenge, but you know, um, this, like I said, this was a 17 sort of vehicle is only four years old. I mean, but that's going to be what's coming our way with everything we do. Uh, you know, that's about what we start seeing four or five year old vehicles start rolling through. Um, you know, if, unless you're at body shops then you see, of course, I mean, a lot of late model stuff, um, I learned a lot of body shops when I was mobile. I mean, I tell you what, when I worked for another company I sold my business to, that's when I, I mean, it was like uh, on steroids because um, many times even the tech support at GM or something, they didn't realize that they didn't have a function built into the GES or like, oh, that doesn't work. Wait a minute, let's check it out. And you're like, yeah, okay. it doesn't work. Or the module they send you doesn't work and, they're, you know, they got to find workarounds or whatever um and then or you bail on a job and you find hey you go back to that shop say where's that where's that whatever car oh it's still at the dealer it's been there for two weeks they haven't fixed it well because <laughs> they don't have a fix for it so i don't feel bad unfortunately i burned two or three hours for nothing at that point because i didn't charge them because i didn't get the job done um, i gotcha do you still do a lot of body shop work now I don't. Um, part of the reason I don't, and, um, you know, you can feel maybe you'll have to edit this out or whatever, but that, sure. you know, basically I had a non-compete clause against the company. That I, I gotcha. Okay. So, um, I stayed away from body shops for a while. Uh, I really don't do much with them, um, just because of that reason. So, uh, mm -hmm. right now I'm staying, I don't have a lot of body shop clients at all, really. Um, I'm okay. mostly mechanical and, you know, uh, Sean, my background is mechanical. I mean, I was a technician before I went mobile. Um, as many people are, I don't, I always hear people saying, oh, they don't, they went mobile and they didn't have any experience. I'm like, Ooh, that is, yeah. you know, you'll learn a lot. I mean, you will learn a lot. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, even if you've been a tech for 10 plus years, you're going to learn a lot going mobile. I, I, I couldn't imagine doing that without a background <sighs> yeah. of what you're walking into. That, that would be, I, I don't know. I think near impossible. Maybe if you were just programming, but even then you're going to run into stuff that you got to think away your way around. And yeah, you got you're constantly doing workarounds. Um, not not to say to cheat, um, to cheat or to bypass what needs to be done, but sometimes the, the a flow chart you may be dealing with uh, actually does not lead to the right conclusion. I'm sure we've many of uh, technicians have experienced that. I mean, it's like a sure. replace PCM or install known good computer. Or well, I don't have a known good computer around for whatever I'm working on. So that's a super challenge right there. Um, one of the other things I had a thought that was crossing my mind about, uh, oh, you're talking about uh, not jumping into mobile right off the rip. I, I was doing, or I was a technician for 16 years before I went mobile. So I had 16 years okay. under my belt, which it's a fair amount, right? Um, I, I knew what I was doing, but I, I, I quickly realized how much I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, and after that, um, I was doing it for a couple of years and the guy that I ended up hiring to do, actually my, he became my right hand man. He was not a technician. He had a computer background. Uh, he had associate's degree in computer science or something in networking. Um, and he was helping me do my marketing. He rode along with me taking pictures for my newsletter and he ended up okay. uh, just really sticking with me and asking a boatload of questions saying, how's this work? How's that work? And he's like, do you ever think you'll have enough business where, you know, I could work for you? And that's, a, I mean, it ended up being a blessing, man. He ended up being uh, my go-to uh, guy. I mean, like he ran my business when I went on vacation and it was no problem. I mean, he learned a lot. Within two years, he was running circles around most technicians when it came to voltage drop testing, looking up schematics, you know, diagnosing problems. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. What's up, Tommy? Sorry, gentlemen. How do you, do I sound okay? I'm, I'm on my laptop, man. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I just um, I don't know if I'm echoing or not because I'm in the shop. Sound good, man. It's a little bit. All it's right. not too bad. Hey, man, I forgot what the hell we talking about today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about how cool Tommy is. I got a whole list here. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> good to see you, Tommy. Likewise, man. Uh, we were gonna do what? Uh, maybe what you did right, did wrong, going mobile. Um, looking back on uh, maybe some stuff you might have changed or did the same or a little different, uh, something like that. So, yeah, I was just chatting uh, uh, with Brian about him getting going. Um, where Did you work in the independent shops or uh, dealer yeah. or what? Um, the last uh, eight years I was in the independent, um, and actually the first 
couple of years I was independent as well. Um, but yeah, well, maybe it was nine years. I don't, I don't know. Six years to one place, three, yeah, nine years. Last nine years before I went mobile, I was in an independent shop. And then before that, I jumped around a couple of dealers. Um, always really just following the service manager. I mean, really, that's what it was. One manager would leave one dealer and go to another and, you know, offer me $2 more an hour or, you know, some more money and they'd offer me more money. I'd be like, okay, and I'd go over there and then spend a year or two and then you go somewhere else and I'd follow another parts guy. I mean, I don't know. The dealership life was very cutthroat and a bunch of baloney. Um, I, I, did, I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. I grown up or as a kid or as a young technician, I thought that's where I want to be. I want to be sure. at the dealer, right? But it didn't take me long to realize it's like, man, I'm not making friends with the right people here. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I'm just, my, my problem with the dealer is that I, well, how I grew up, man, I was just never the fucking one that kissed ass. And the, my problem was I had no issues with ownership. My pro, my issue was with the fucking manager. Hated me. Like, legit, the dude hated me. And I, to this day, I, I never knew why. Hmm. You know, I just, I would, I didn't, I know what I had to do, man. I think I, I consider myself a pretty hard worker, man, but I'm not going to fucking suck your dick. <laughs> you know? That, oh, that, yeah. That, that, something, if I don't like something, I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> well, I think that was, uh, to be honest with you, Tommy, in your situation or what you're saying there, I wasn't, I, I'm sure it was different for me. Um, but I wasn't like because I would just say how it was. Okay, hey, so and so had two comebacks on that car, and you know how dealer lemon law they got to fix it. And, and yeah. then it was my problem. They'd always get let this other guy hang parts, and then they'd come back to me. Um, I'm not saying I'd always fix it, but I, you know, I, I usually could come up with a result most times. And that got old, man. I got tired of that baloney. And um, when I started realizing the management and politic baloney, I was like, all of a sudden, I, I had an idea a long time ago. I was like, hey, I wonder if I could just go to other shops and help them with their problems. And then I couldn't, didn't really put two and two together until my old boss sent me to the, uh, I think it was J2534 Pro Ring back in 2010. He was sending me okay. these lessons or, you know, evening training and I was going there and I came back and he said, what do we need to be able to do, you know, GM, Ford and Chrysler? And I told him, I was like, hey, we need to have, we need a tech too. We can't do everything just through SPS. We need this and we need that. And uh, he's like, I'm not spending that money. <laughs> and he was a <laughs> profitable shop. I mean, that shop was, you know, at the time for the size of the shop, it was a very profitable shop. It wasn't no slouch. I mean, we were killing it. And uh, I'm like, wait a minute. If he's not going to spend the money, I got an idea. And then the rest is history. I took off and did it from there. Um, one of the things I think I shared with some of the people of different uh, Facebook groups I'm a part of uh, is there's a book by Dave Anderson called The 15 Commandments for Peak Performance and Sales. And you think it's a sales book, but really it's a life book. And, man, it's about playing your ace. That's one thing. Play your ace. Your acquired competitive edge. What are you better at than most people aren't? And you just put that to your favor and, you know, you'll find yourself doing pretty well. It's like if I was to say I'm going to try and be an opera singer or even a rock singer, I don't have a voice for singing, man. I can't do it. Um, I would love to, but, uh, you know, it's not my thing. I could work my tail off and take lessons and spend hours and hours and hundreds of hours and hundreds of dollars to get educated on how to do it, but I just can't. It's not my thing. So playing your ace is a huge, huge thing. Um, hey, man, we're recording right now. Oh, it's live, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, we got the, uh, the, <laughs> the fucking manager and suck my dick and all that stuff. So, yeah, fuck. <laughs> don't lie with Tommy. That's what I love about this guy. He never holds anything back. He'll tell you. He, he, he if you do something good, he'll tell you. If yeah. you do something bad, he'll tell you. I, I, that's the best, man. If, I love if you want an honest up. opinion, <laughs> go straight to Tommy. I feel like a, I feel like a dirtbag right now. I, I thought you were waiting for me to start. <laughs> no, because if I don't hit that record button, I miss good conversation so it, it can all be edited no all right worries. my apologies the whole industry i'm pretty sure you heard, heard those words more than one <laughs> yeah we've but been in maybe. shops before <laughs> well well my start was interesting i worked at the i did work at a dealer but it was short very short lived i think it was maybe like nine ten months and i was out of state i lived in florida for the first time and yeah man i, I the only thing that working at the dealer did me was boost my confidence because when I was out of school, it's just like, oh man, dealer, dealer techs and dealer this and dealer that. And even growing up in a, in a dumb shop, everything was just like, well, I'll just take it to the dealer. They'll fix it. Blah, blah, blah. Sure. Seeing the hacks that I saw there, bro, I'm like, man, nah, man, I'm, I think I can hold my own pretty well. But, uh, in terms of 
in terms of like the mobile business my, my start was weird my shop was always small so it was and it we did tires mainly so uh during the when i actually took over we did tires during the day and i would actually wrench at, at evenings and nights so a lot of the times uh some of these shops would be like i have you know we have friends, mutual friends that, that worked on cars and they knew I can do something and they'll, they'll, they're, they get in the jam and they're like, oh man, I said, dude, I don't got room for it, man. Like I, I need at least three or four days. I'm like, oh man, why don't you just come over real quick on your way home? I was like, all right, well, I mean, even better for me, I don't have to make the space. So I usually sometimes after, after I close up shop or whatever, I just run out to the shop and I'll, uh, I'll start, uh, you know, I'll do some diag and stuff like that. And, um, that's like the kind of bad part about my mobile business is that it's at this point i'm about 80 percent diag okay and i don't mind it but it's it gets it gets old and it got old quick because i officially went mobile like during rona because i i, I kind of shut started shutting down the shop a little bit okay I, I actually enjoy doing mobile stuff but you know it's also fun having those nice you know money making programming days but i don't get a lot of those mines is mainly mainly diag really I agree with you, Tommy. The uh, mobile is, is, I mean, at least for my business, it, it, it swings. I mean, I'll have three days in a row where it's nothing but programming. I mean, just, you know, programming, programming, nonstop, three days in a row, big money, big days, great, right? And then mm -hmm. it'll shut off and it'll be quiet. It'll be like, what? The phone didn't, you know, the phone's not ringing. It's quiet. And then, then it'll pick back up again. It goes both ways. But then also the uh, diagnostics. I was the other way. I, I did strictly programming. I started out... Um, I did a few diagnostic jobs and early on, I mean, I'm talking 10 years ago, nine years ago, I was doing some diagnostic jobs for some body shops and I found out really quick, um, the type of problems they have are usually easy to fix. I mean, it's like, Hey, where does the car get smacked? Um, what connectors did you touch? Well, you sure. know, or, I mean, you get called out there and they got a headliner down on a Volvo and it's like, it doesn't start. It's like, well, plug in the headliner and the car starts up. The cam bus runs up through the headliner and <laughs> it's that simple, right? Um, but um, I really didn't do much at all. I mean, like less than 10% or less, probably less than 5% was my uh, business of my business was the diagnostics back in the day. And I started doing a little more and a little more as time went on, especially as I hired other people, other technicians um, and getting bigger. It's like, well, you know, when we have that slow time, it's like, well, I don't, I can't, can't have people standing around. We got to be able to uh, do some work. So we took on more and more stuff. And uh, I had a big turning point when I left the other company that I sold my business to, and I went back on my own uh, to do training. Um, and then COVID hit big time, and I, I wanted to teach people basic electricity and scopes and all that stuff, but COVID really put a change in my thing. It's like, okay, you know what? Um, I'm gonna take take on everything I can because um, I need it. I mean, I got pretty tight for a little while there a year ago, so I was just uh, doing everything I could to uh, do it. So now, now, right now, my revenue is probably about 50% diagnostics and 50% programming. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I wish I had more. I shouldn't say I wish. I enjoy the diagnostics. I really do. I wish I had more customers to understood how to sell diagnostics. So that's one of the biggest challenges. Is, <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, that's my, that's my, my, my biggest problem. But so. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure a few times we talked with Sean and stuff. So this is my situation right now. Uh, the shop is pretty much closed, but I, I still work out of here. Like I have some good customers in my in my back my catalog that, that they have my number and I'll, I'll rent for them. It kind of fills up my slow days. My mobile business is still kind of it's kind of slow. Um, like I'll have busy days, but not the whole week busy. So I figure, you know, I'll get some wrenching. I'll do some. I'll hang some parts or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't mind it. But lately, I've gotten uh, my behind kicked on a couple cars, and I'll, I'll bring them here, you know. And and the biggest issue I have is um, I, I don't speak stupid, so when I get talk to some of these places, it's just kind of like I have to decipher what they're trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. sure. So perfect example, I I had a, a 2000 Rav4. The guy goes, uh, uh, he tells me, so the alternator isn't charging. And I put another battery in it, and I put three alternators, and it's having a problem charging. It was the exact words. It was in Spanish, but, you know, rough translation. I said, all right, cool. Well, one of the things I don't do uh, mobile is parasitic draws. No way. There isn't just, it's a total waste of time. And obviously, I charge more for it, too. 
So I show up there, um, and he tells me, he's like, oh, I fixed a charging problem, but now it's killing my battery. I'm like, and I didn't like, again, I should have paid attention to him, yeah. but I didn't. So I was like, hey, man, that's a parasitic drop, bro. I charged this much for that. He's like, I don't care. I just need to fix. I go, but well, here's the problem. Where Was this car sitting outside? He was like, yeah. He was like, I, I brought it in so you wouldn't have to, you know, mess with it. I'm like, yeah, but now you woke the car up. Yeah, it's a 2000 RAV4 or whatever, but still, the car wakes up. Yep. So I'm like, man, all right, I'll spend, I'll spend some minutes on it or whatever. And I spent like 30 minutes on it, dude, and I just ended up waving my thermal imager on it, and I, I waved it around. I mean, cause it's 2000 RAV4. Like, what, what the hell can I have? <laughs> the cluster was glowing red. I'm like, hey, man, do me a favor. Tomorrow, I'm not going to charge you right now because I'm not sure, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to yank this cluster out. If it starts tomorrow, give me a call. Well, they try to be slick. They, they, they put a U. They, they did exactly what I said. The draw went away. But then they decided to change a cluster in it and ship it. Well, the new cluster is staying awake now. So then he gave my number to the customer, which is a oh, normal. That's a good yeah. conversation. That's terrible. I hate so when he happens. calls me, and he ends up being a, a, a auction car guy, seller, or whatever the hell you want to call it. That's guys. even worse. <laughs> All right. And I do. I, and I told him the truth. I'm like, look, man, honestly, dude. And I'm no, I'm not, not trying to insult you, man, but. 80% of you guys, man, don't want to invest shit. And I go, and I'm not the one, dude. I'm not the one that's going to run to the junkyard to buy a part for you, bro. I'm not, I mean, it is what it is. He's like, dude, I sunk so much money into this car. He's like, at this point, I don't give a shit what you charge me. I want it fixed. So I shot a number at him to, di to do the diag. He's like, man, when can I drop it off? He dropped it off. Long story short, man, it was missing, um... It was missing one one of the twelve volt feeds that comes from the fuse box, so the idiot shop decides he wants to just run a jumper wire from the positive twelve volt lug <laughs> to that <laughs> to that to that wire, True. not knowing that it's back feeding into the cluster and keeping the cluster on. Okay. Oh man, that's tough stuff. And it was missing. A, it was missing a fuse. <laughs> man. <laughs> Slap a fuse in, fix the wire, and test the charging system. Yeah. Everything is everything is good, but again. That's that's really my one of my biggest issues is it's it's just um, sometimes it's it might just even be me you know like I can't I can't talk to these guys sometimes and it's just like because you have a, a standard that you set for yourself of how to approach things and they they take you for a loop they they take you for a loop and Tommy what you said I mean too I've, I'm over here writing notes because uh, phone conversations or I call it customer interrogation. I mean, that's, a, that's part, I mean, being mobile, people don't think about that, but you can spend two minutes to five minutes on a phone, which you're like, oh, time's money. I got to get money, money. Well, two to five minutes, sometimes I can disqualify a customer for myself and <laughs> save myself so much time or so much aggravation or, or whatever, you know, or they understand, hey, this is going to not be, this isn't going to be like a hundred dollar repair. This is going to cost a lot of money to get this thing diagnosed properly. And, and I make sure I prep them all the way, make sure it's all cool. I mean, I'm sure Tom, you probably deal with some people like I do, or you're on the phone with them. Oh yeah. My, cu my customer should have the money to pay you. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you're, you're calling me up. You're paying me now for, I mean, right. I get into stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. that's a big red flag. Um, and another thing is the, uh, uh, I mean, I deal with customers that flat out, I mean, I don't deal with many anymore. Um, I've, I've had experience. I've been doing it for a while now and, and in my area, I have a reputation or whatever. And I think it's a decent one, but I've also learned there's certain customers who would tell me, well, my customer, my customer won't pay for diagnostics. How do we, how do you want to fix the car? You want to just guess and throw parts at it? I mean, you can do that. Go get a thousand dollar computer, toss that on there. I'll come out and program it. When it doesn't yeah. fix it, uh, you know, then you can put hang something else and you can call me later. Um, I don't, I, that's a challenge in our industry. And those are the people that are really bringing down the level. Um, you know, I, I'm, I know you guys have talked about it before. The most complex thing that these people own is this vehicle they're driving in, but they want the least expensive possible yeah. person to work on it. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think I think a lot of it, yeah, it kind of depends on the area you're in too, and how the shops operate. So depending on, I don't know, it's probably it pro honestly is probably based on like the income because there is an area of town, and I get calls from shops around there, and that's exactly how it is. Is they're not a diagnostics is not a thing that they sell, right? They just sell here's what it is to fix the car, um, 
there, there's not a whole other thing to actually, you know, utilize a skill set and tools to figure out what's wrong with the car. Um, so th that, that definitely can be tough. But I like what you're saying, how you <laughs> disqualify shops. <laughs> right on the phone. I, I need to start doing that. <laughs> it, it, it saves a lot of time. I mean, and I've, I've tried really hard to get, um, I, I try my best to be open-minded to people. Okay. This guy doesn't know me. The shop doesn't know me. I got to make sure I'm kind of, uh, you know, I tell him, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but this is the way it's going to go. Um, this is how it's going to be. And if you don't like it, it's okay. The dealer's down the street or you can take somewhere else. It's no problem. I, no, I'm not going to be mad at you. <laughs> You know, um, that's what you got to do. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to ask Tommy is, uh, you said since the coronavirus happened, you started going uh, mobile or, you know, pushing mobile harder. Is that? So what, what happened here was I um, I wasn't doing well. I'll be very blunt, man. I made a lot of mistakes owning the shop. I, I, took, I took on way too much. I try to be the best and not the cheapest, but unfortunately my, my, ne my neighborhood didn't didn't support those ideals no matter how good I was you know and I just you know I, I I suddenly I realized I was just wasting time and then but I didn't I had a good crew you know so I just kind of kept fighting to keep them afloat and Rona hit um what kind of happened was this state is a was is a little you know uh its policies are a little not business friendly you know oh yeah so there was there was even legislation talking about how you know a business owner can be liable for you know coronavirus injuries and stuff like that and i'm just like well okay how are you gonna prove you got it here and i'm like dude i, I can't i can't deal with that and then a fr one of my friends passed away mm -hmm. at, at the beginning of of Ramon, you know so i'm just like you know what man i told the guys listen man i'm gonna here's three weeks of salary because supposedly that's what our lockdown is gonna last three weeks here's three weeks of salary guys let's reconvene in three weeks well one of the guys was like he was very upset he's like well i got a family to feed blah 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 i said well we're gonna talk in three weeks dude he's like well i don't care he's like i'm just gonna find another job i'm like well you do what you gotta do man i can't stop you the other guy took some time off and he started he worked for me a little bit later on the road but it was kind of like my excuse you know and mm -hmm. i just i just went off with him. i'm like well i'm getting phone calls from work i got shops calling me uh, screw it man let me what can i lose you know i'll just go out there I, i'll be precautious and i'll just get the work done and that's kind of how i fell into that what well, the problem then the problem became because i still had customers you know but then i'm just like well why am i going to change my labor rate per hour because i'm doing breaks nah man like i can make more going mobile so then i just i i charge a lot more for my mechanical labor rate and you know i started filling in the spots here and there but it just gets old, man, because when, so, especially now, parts are not becoming a little bit harder to deal with. Cars are being held up and blah blah blah. But my um, my biggest, I guess it was like I said, Rona for me was a, was kind of a blessing, and I I don't have any regrets. I love the mobile gig. Mm -hmm. I just don't enjoy it here so much because those customers that you're talking about. Those are the majority of my customers. That's what's out there, right? The, the, the only the only difference is is that I've I take the good with the bad because a lot of their diags are stupid simple. I mean, like like I'll show up to a shop down the street, I'll go up, I'll show up, and I'll be like, oh man, this is a communication issue, man. That's three hundred bucks, dude. But you need to take it to the shop, bro. I, I can't do that here. I mean, you got dog shit everywhere. <laughs> there's fucking dog piss. And you don't have any lifts. I'm in the fucking I'm in the ground and it's snow. I'm like, nah, man. Yeah, my toe to the shop, dude. I'm, I'll knock it out by the end of the day. Tow it here in 20 minutes. I found a, a broken connector underneath the vehicle, like something stupid, and I'm done. Hey, man, you want me to fix this? Like, no, no, no. I'll just send it back. All right, well, I'm done. So, having a shop makes those situations a lot easier. Definitely, I bet. There's probably yeah. a lot of times I can. I mean, I I don't have a shop, and I don't bring. I mean, rarely does anybody ever come over my house for something. It's usually something quick and easy. I mean, and that's like I mean, rarely, maybe twice in the last two years. I mean, it just doesn't happen. Um, and I, I tell you what, I, I I'm working wherever I go. I mean, you know, that's that's just how I do it, and it's it's challenging sometimes. You got exactly what Tommy said. They got a watchdog, a dog that lives in the shop. It's it's a you know mean, ugly, nasty dog. I I sent you guys that picture and the 
there was a chihuahua at the shop that yeah. came up and bit me on the side of the leg. I didn't even know the thing was coming. All of a sudden, it's snarling, and it bit me on the leg, and it drew blood, but it is just a chihuahua, so it was okay. But I was like, holy crap, what's going on here? Oh, so, man. I guess, I guess it's really not that uh, – well, it's not, yeah, not a pit bull, so <laughs> I've never got I never got bit. I had a couple dogs scare me at a couple shops. I mean, like you know, I'm, I'm jumping back, um, but no, I never got bit. Luckily, <laughs> but some of the stuff with Tommy's saying there's there's shops that I don't know. I mean, where you even on a good day when a shop is quote unquote cleaned up, yeah. I can't even. I got a Milwaukee pack out box that I'm using. I can't even roll it. It's too wide. I can't get it through anywhere. Um, there's just you know engines and transmissions and. It's just it's parts, ridiculous like, the, these places you walk into and you're like there's a maze to get to the next bay and you're stepping over stuff and, and there's tripping. like one light in the whole shop I I don't know I don't even know how people can can work all day long in that if I was oh, a tech I'd, I'd be out of there I'd be like no thanks um, crazy what what some of these places are like oh you run into all kinds of weird stuff i had a shop that i can't remember i have i used to have a little key machine and um i plugged it in and i flipped the switch and i got shocked okay they had a ground wired up to the um <laughs> uh, hot i mean it was just wrong i'm, I'm like Zzz. i'm like whoa <laughs> blow a fuse and now the guy's mad at me saying his lift doesn't work i'm like dude your lift was wired in improperly i can't <laughs> And, you know, I, I literally had a guy saying that I broke his uh, electricity and he didn't speak good English. He is, I don't even know what language it was. It wasn't Spanish or anything. He, he was something else. And, I mean, he's yelling. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, you know, you run into some weird stuff. Um, you know, I've had jobs, I mean, talking about mobile, I've, I've done some uh, crankshaft variation learns I, where I literally, I'm kind of like outside the vehicle on a GM and kind of hopping in there. You got to push the brake, you know, rev it up or whatnot. And I push on a brake pedal and brake line blows. And they're like, well, that wasn't oh, like that geez. before. I'm like, you got to be <laughs> kidding me. I mean, you know, if, if I can push the brake pedal and the line blows, well, you had a line. You know, I'm doing yourself <laughs> and your customer a favor, man. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get out of here. I mean, yeah, some, some, of these, some of these shops, man, and I know it's like beating a dead horse, man, but some of these shops, dude, they just need to just jump off a cliff. <laughs> I mean, they don't do anybody else uh, any 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 good like they don't do they don't do us any favors um one of my one of my biggest rules is always i will not i do not talk to your customers yeah. if i want to talk to customers man i'll sit my fat ass back in my shop mm -hmm. i go i do not talk to your customers but then sometimes like I'll, I'll get into you know situations where i'm in a good mood or or i'll uh i feel bad for like the for the shop or whatever i mean dude this this guy had three I think he told me two or three other locksmith, mobile guys, whatever the hell you want to call them, looking at this Jeep Compass for an Ocom. Um, he's telling me, like, he had that I, so another shop gave him my number and I shot him a price. And he's like, man, like, you know, I, I, I don't know how to do it. I'm like, I mean, either you pay me or not, man. Like, what do you want me to tell you? He's like, if you're looking for a guy that's going to do it for a hundred bucks, man, call someone else. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. My comp fees are minimum 250 bucks. And um, long, long story short, he's like, oh, man, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, uh, first, and the next thing I know, what, he had, what happened was he was stalling me. Because I was just going to be like, all right, man, I'll take the L, man. I'll, I'm, you're close to my shop, so I'll just go back to my shop. I don't care. You, won't, you don't want to pay me. The customer shows up, and then he kind of, like, conned me into talking to the customer. She was a, she was a nice young lady. She was, a little, she was a little pissed, though. So my strategy when people are angry is I let them talk. So, oh, la, 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 I went here, I went there, I went there, and this guy already spent it. All right, you done? <laughs> yeah, okay. So my job is to figure out what your problem is. My fee to find your problem is this much. Whatever the hell it is, that's between you and the shop owner. Mm -hmm. I go, my job is to figure out what's wrong. I specialize in this. That's why I charge what I charge. I go, I understand you spent a lot of money here and a lot of money there, but I can't help you there. I go, what I can help you with is your problem now. And he's like, well, how do I know you're going to figure it out? I go, I'm going to figure it out. I go, I just don't know what it's going to cost you to fix it. You could have a bad module. The harness could be chewed. You know, I, my, 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 my 250 is going to go to figuring out what's wrong with your problem. I go, you go to the doctor. The doctor needs to run tests. This is what you need to pay for those tests. It's, it's the same thing. So what do you want to do? 
you want to do it or not? I go, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm on the clock, so. Tommy, that, that sums it up. I get so many people that I deal with that want, they want the car fixed for that price. That's what they think. They, in their head, they right, think, right. I'm going to spend X amount of dollars and this thing's going to be fixed. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. no. Or I, mean, I, also get, sometimes. I also get, I also get a lot, are you going to roll that into the bill? Well, it's easier to explain that at a at, like doing mobile than it is here at the shop because that was actually my biggest, uh, my biggest problem. Everybody around here, every single shop I do, either does some sort of discount from for Diag when you do the repair, or sure. they don't charge it's it, free or they roll it into the back end of the bill. I don't do any of that. I never did any of that. This is what you're gonna pay. This is what you're paying for, man. It is what it is. And so that was, I guess she was kind of, you know, taking the back. She's like, okay, go ahead. I was like, all right, in the waiting room, give me like, I don't know, an hour. We'll see what I can come up with. Stupid ass shop. It was the cluster. The cluster was bringing down the interior bus and then the ABS, the ABS module was no good, which was causing the original issue, which was, was she brought it in for a, uh... so the whole issue here was, I think they did something, they screwed something with the car. I don't know what happened, but I know that the cluster brought down the interior bus. The can I think can't can be or whatever. And the ABS module was a no com, and it was it was causing a no um, no speedometer, which is why they brought in the car. <sighs> and then after three weeks of people fucking with it, cluster took a shit or some blacksmith bricked it because he replaced the PCM. I don't know what the hell happened, <laughs> but she was happy as shit, and I got the car started. Wow. So I mean, sometimes you just it's 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 all about learning how to how to how to talk to people, and you know us us mobile guys we have a. The advantages we have is that we know we're, we know what we're talking about. The disadvantages is usually we talking to these people when they're already pissed. Yeah, rightfully so. Well, and you don't want these people right getting your phone numbers. That's that's where I've run into it. Is they'll give out my number and then they're this person's calling me about their car and maybe maybe I did fix something and now they want to know about something else. I'm like, bring it to the shop. Like <laughs> I. I uh, I will come look at your car and we'll figure out what's wrong with it. But don't don't call me at eight o'clock on a Friday asking me why it's doing this weird thing. So that's I, I and that's my own personal problem. I need to get a business phone because I don't have one yet. Um, but uh, that's been a challenge. You know, Sean, me. I still, I still run my business mostly mostly on my self personal cell phone. My old one I got so much where it was just too much, and I end up getting another cell phone, and then I end up going with a service called Grasshopper. Um, it's a third party okay. phone thing. It's forty bucks a month works out pretty well and i'm integrating that slowly building into that, that into mine just because it's like okay you can have hours at you know after 6 p.m or 5 p.m it you turn it off it just don't it goes right to voicemail and it emails yeah, you all the voicemails that. it's nice i mean it's 40 bucks a month it isn't it really isn't bad um but i've i've had only a handful of times where my customer gives basically they give my invoice to their customer and then that customer calls me i'm like and you know these people most time they're mad blah, 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 blah. you know i'm like whoa whoa, <laughs> yep. whoa whoa okay and and exactly what tommy said tommy you're right man let them talk let them talk let them get it out and then you want to do one step on that you ask them a question how did that make you feel or, or what that shop did that to you they did you wrong like that okay what happened at the next place you know let them get it off their chest because then oh man when, when you let them clear themselves man get it off Get it, get it out. You're in better shape for them to listen, and um, you know it's tough. Uh, the phone is a tough, tough thing. We were just talking about qualifying customers. I have, I have a, a probably too many people that call me still, and will talk my ear off about stuff. And I, I try to help sometimes. I'll give advice out over phone. Actually, I got a lot of shops I have uh, billing set up, so I'll say, okay, yeah, we talk for 20 minutes. You're paying me for that time now. And they, they know that, and they're happy. Huh? <laughs> Well, I'm not a retainer, um, but I do have their stuff, and they, they basically, they know, um, and I try to be I try to be very reasonable with that. I mean, I'm, if somebody calls me and asks me a quick question, can you do use computer on this? I'll, I'll say yes, no, whatever. But I get other people who want to pick my brain, and it just gets old, man. I'm tired. I mean, you know, I, there's only so many hours in a day, and somebody wants to take 20 minutes to talk about all the things they did that didn't work. It's like, let me come out and look at it. I, I'll get there. I'll, I'll do, you know, hopefully, usually, of course, the goal of being mobile and being a technician is we can get down to the bottom of it relatively quickly uh, because of our experience. Um, but it, it sure is tough, man. Dealing with the people on the phone, that that's huge. I, I help people out of state. <clears throat> like shops in my area, I cut that off a long time ago. I, um, I never, when I was, because when I was at the shop, like the full time at the shop, 
like one of, one of my guys is like, bro, don't you get tired of talking to people? I'm like, ah, it's not that bad. He's like, he's like, actually, he goes, why don't you start like, you know, jotting down how much time you spend, dude? I was spending three hours a day on the phone oh, damn. helping people out. I was like, holy shit. So then I just started kind of cutting people off. Like, hey, you know what, man? I'm sorry. Right now I'm a little bit busy, but I got tomorrow available if you want to drop it off. And then they, they find, people started finally getting the hint. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to tell people to fuck off. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it is what it is because at the end of the day, man, they, it's, it's, and it gets to a point, man, where these people, because like, me, I, I have a thing about politeness. Hey, good morning, sir. Hey, good, I mean, I, yeah, I sound like a jackass most of the times, but I'm really <laughs> polite. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, oh, to being professional, you know, it's whole, whole yeah, good, and, um, yourself to a good standard, man. So then, so then I'll get like, I've had people text me fucking pictures of codes. <laughs> That's it. And then I'm just like, so I look at them. I'm like, okay. And then they're like, and they'll call me like an hour later. So what's up, man? What do you think? Hey, how's it going, man? Everything all right with you? How's the family? <laughs> and then they'll, they'll, they'll be quiet for like five minutes. And then they're like, yeah, so what do you think about the coats? <laughs> I go, well, I think you need a mechanic, bro. <laughs> like, so then I start becoming a, like, you know, like a jackass. And then eventually those, those, those people start coming kind of falling off by the wayside. And I guess like going going back, one of the one of my mistakes that I one of my worst mistakes that I think as a mobile guy is I didn't have a clear cut way of talking to customers. Mm. Like, okay, um, hey man, what do you charge for programming? Oh, what kind of car is it? Oh, it's this car. Oh man, it's it's one fifty. Okay, when can you come? I'll be there in the morning. You get there, the car is like fucking. It's on the street, full of snow. Dead battery. Um, and with a dead battery, and it's a it's a used module, and it's a BMW. Ah. Yeah, I, you know, like like for just you know. So I tell I so now I tell myself anytime a new customer calls me, all right, Mr. Customer, hey, this is Tommy. How may I help you? Oh, you know, we have this. Oh, so right, what I recommend, and this is I learned from this my good friend Pedro Sanchez. Learn to start training your customers. Okay, Mr. Customer, your fee for this is this this. We can only use this type of module. And uh, I can get there between this time and this time. I will give you a 30 minutes okay. heads up when I'm on my way. Um, if you're not ready when I show up, it's going to be X amount of dollars. Um, please make sure the battery is fully charged and the car is inside at a location where I can access it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you really don't think you need to say this type of stuff, right? Oh, you, but You do, man. You do. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah, you actually have to, like, like you would think, right, that... No, I don't. I don't need to clear off a foot of snow off this fucking car. <laughs> no, he'll be fine. He can do it himself. Fuck you! I'm not. Hell no. <laughs> I've, I've, you're you're right on, man. I, it took me a little while. I mean, I probably did things the hard way for at least two years, two and a half, three years, and I started getting too busy to the point where I didn't have time to monkey around with the the dead battery, the the car oh. with a foot of snow on it, the car that's in the back forty. Or the car that you know i mean sometimes you gotta be real clear i mean i mean i've had cars where they tell me oh come program this uh used computer and then i get there and then they don't even have keys for it i'm like they're like oh you need keys to program <laughs> i'm like i mean i've i mean this type of stuff drives you nuts um but just like you said uh tommy i think you said pedro was it said about training your customers i have customers that i've trained and took me a long time but the guy will call me up literally hey brian i got blah 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 we're doing a used module we plugged it in it has communication the battery's fully charged i have it inside it's waiting for you anytime in the next two days if you can get here it, you know i have customers are like that and i love it that's that's gravy train when you get those customers but then you know there's certain customers i've learned and you know maybe this isn't a I can't say it's a, I got a nice standard operating procedure with it because certain customers of mine, I know the, the shop, I've been there so many times, they know the drill, everything's always nice. I mean, they, you know, they'll wheel out an extension cord. I, I carry my own extension cord, but they'll have an extension cord like right by the vehicle to make sure I can open the door. I mean, nice. I get the other oh, shop man, I and they, I mean, I can't even find a car. They're like, oh, we called you on this? Oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we have right. a car, I don't know. <laughs> I covered for, for, for De La Torre one day to some shop in one of the, like, when you hear all the bad shit about Chicago, that's this neighborhood. Like, literally, it's a, it's a war zone there. So, I, all right, I, I, I got you, man. I'll go, I'll go cover this. I don't care. And I call them because it's an hour for me to get there with traffic. I go, hey, you know, blah, 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 so-and-so. I'm, I'm going to program this, this uh, I think it was an Acadia transmission or something. You know, easy. And I'm like, yeah, we need you to come in today. I said, no, no, okay, that's fine. I'm, you're on the schedule. Is the car ready? Yeah, it's ready. 
I show up, fucking pole jacks on the car, uh, transmission's still hanging. No. And I'm like, hey man, so so what happened? Oh, come back in three hours. Uh, the mechanic's like, oh, come back in three hours. Three hours, my asshole. Like, Dude, it, it's, it was an hour for me to get here. I'm only doing a favor for Pedro, man, like, because he said you guys really needed this done today. He yeah. can't come in and, feel, like, and, and get it done for you. And they're like, well, what can we do? I said, like, well, all right, man. He was bolting it up, man. Bolt it up, man. Plug it in. I'll program it this way. In the air. The car was still in the air. <laughs> so I do the engine. That one you need to do the sequential programming, ECM and TCM. Sure. Mm-hmm. ECM went through. TCM didn't go through. I was like, oh, my God. I go make sure they connected it right. It was connected right. Try it again. Try it again. Nothing. Bro, I I hook up. I mean, I have tech to win. I go to tech to win. Guess what code I have? No comment with the TCM. So I tell their, their their guy, I'm like, hey, man, why did you guys change the trans? Oh, something like no comp code with the TCM. <laughs> I was like, all right, man. You know what, dude? You owe me 150, bro. It's, I tried twice. I can't do it anything. It is what it is. And then... I, I guess I guess they I told him man you know take take you have uh, some sort of wiring issue if you guys can't figure it out call Pedro he'll be more than happy to come back and and diagnose it for you it's probably electrical at this mm-hmm. point but I don't know so then they call him saying that I didn't finish my job and then they want their money back they called Pedro not me oh. and I'm just like and Pedro's like hey bro what happened I'm like Dude, this and this and this and this so Pedro ended up firing that guy as a customer because he was. According to him, it wasn't the first time he did it, but it's just dumb, dumb stuff like that. That programming fixes everything. Nah, man, yeah. I can't fix you. You know, so uh, Tommy brought up a fix on and uh, about the, uh, you know, said call, you know, call when you're 30 minutes out or whatever. Um, that is something that, you know, I implemented a long time ago. And it seems like sometimes I forget or I get busy with another phone call. And before you know it, you know, you're on a road, three phone calls in a row. It's like I'm already there. And I'm like, man, I didn't call him to tell him I was here. And then, you know, for whatever reason, you know, something doesn't work out the way you hoped and it's, it's a bad situation. Um, but that's one thing I wish I would have done from day one. I mean, from the very first day of, of doing it. Call when I'm, I call it C, CWOW. It's on my, that's how I do my scheduling. It'll be like CWOW, call when I'm okay. late because you can save so much time. And you, you believe it or not, there's other mobile businesses um that were across the country and you know i I ended up rubbing shoulders with them when uh, we all merged together at one point and i couldn't believe how many of them just won't do that and i'm like guys you're wasting time you're going to drive 35 minutes or 40 minutes or an hour or even more sometimes to get somewhere you're not telling them you're on the way you got a call every time you're on the way um and i was managing a group of technicians on the road no my gosh that was like herding cats, man. Um, <laughs> it was trying to manage four or five guys on a road. Oh my lord, that's not my idea of a good time. But um, yeah, I tell you what, if if you just do simple little steps like that, it uh, makes a huge difference in your efficiency uh, being mobile. I think a lot of guys don't think about little things like that, or they say I'm going to go mobile and this and that. And they don't realize. I think. Uh, I think PJ Walter says, or no, I'm sorry, Keith Perkins has said it multiple times uh, in different things. Um, yeah, take PJ out of that. Sorry about that. But Keith Perkins has said multiple times uh, to other groups of people that I just happen to be around. He's like, you think, you know, you're a good technician. That's great. You want to go mm-hmm. mobile? Well, you probably can, but you got to realize dealing with people. I mean, most of us technicians in a technician world, if we don't own a shop, like Tommy, Tommy's in a situation where he owns a shop. We don't, we got a filter, man. We got this, we got a service advisor or a manager or somebody, a receptionist or somebody that takes down the information. We don't deal directly with a customer. We go and fix the car. Well, all of a sudden you have another hat you're wearing, uh, not to mention all the hats you wear for running a business, but you got, you got to deal straight up with that. Um, you know, the phone's a big, big, big thing getting that information. That's huge. Yeah. Um, it, it the the dealing with people thing is something that not every technician is really great at either too right and that's a whole other skill set to learn um i mean all the things you guys are talking about like <laughs> talking on the phone getting the right information for people um but also for me one of the things i struggled at is telling people no for certain things or you know 
drawing a line certain places and that might just be my own personality but I, i've struggled with that and had to learn the hard way sometimes is when to say no to something to to someone whether it be a shop or a customer or whatever but that honestly once you figure that out it makes your life a lot easier in a lot <laughs> a lot of ways just say no nope, that's not for me no thanks <laughs> there's definitely something to be said about learning how to say no like learning how to go and you spend you spend time and you're like man this is a real shit show do everyone deal with it and learning how to say you know what man sorry i can't help you with this man this and this and this and just walking away i've had that um i've had that issue because you know my my pride i'm like man i'm not gonna let this car beat me but dude those cars are a total waste of time and you can never i don't care what anybody says you can never build them all the time you spend on it time working on it researching and stuff like that and that's one of the advantages of the shop where i'm like all right well when i have some free time i'll play with it maybe make a case study out of it get some money you know on the back end that way but realistically man we ain't heroes bro none of us have capes dude at the end of the day yeah we we want to we want to enjoy our work but if we're trying to make a dollar here and i think that's one of the things that i've i've struggled with man like learning how to say no i'm not going to work on this salvage hunk of junk your flood car i mean that's that's yeah. a big thing no, I'm not gonna do i love it if i can extract that information that little piece of information oh it sounds you know that are like all these problems and you know i got this 2018 cadillac it's a beautiful car oh well, yeah well <laughs> okay what's the catch right <laughs> um and you know oh and if i can just get them talking there's times i'll try and extend the conversation because the more you let them talk and you'll find out it's a body shop owner and he went ahead and decided to do a uh uh, you know, you bought a flood car salvage and, and it's like, yeah, I throw a high price out there sometimes um, or I'll say no. I mean, I've said no, I don't work on flood cars, but if I know the customer or I get the feeling like, hey, I, I'm going to throw a super high number out there. And if he says yes, well, that's cool. And, you know, this is to start. I'll, I'll tell him, it's, you know, hey, it's going to if it's a flood car. I mean, I've done this and you might have to take this off the thing. I'm at 500 bucks. You, you got a flood car. $500, I'll spend two hours. And if I decide after two hours I'm walking, it's $500. Oh, well, blah, blah, blah. is it going to be fixed? Well, no, 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 you're not listening to me. I mean, I've, be, I've become, I started playing hardball so hard, and that's what I got to do. I mean, I, I've done it, and it's actually working for the flood cars because now they either A, they go away, and I don't even see them in the first place, or B, you know, I, at that $500, for, for, I'm there for two, two and a half hours, I get time, well, I shouldn't say Tommy's problem, but... I don't even know if it's a problem, but I get the, I get that ego problem now. It's like, wait a minute, I'm going to figure this thing out. I'm I want to, you know, I get yeah. that far into it. You give me two hours to play and research and look at diagrams and figure out what's what. Now I want to fix this thing, and you know, and I also got to stop. You know, I'll make sure I stop and say, hey, we're at that point. Now it's X amount per per hour, and I make sure I got a player. But um, pre qualifying people, man, it's just so important, especially if you find salvage cars. I mean, for those guys thinking about going into mobile, I mean, so much. Uh, you'll, you'll get the weird stuff. I mean, <laughs> you're going to get the weird stuff, the oddball stuff, people putting the wrong engines and transmissions and this and that and asking you to program some Chrysler that's got the wrong crankshaft position sensor or should I say the wrong crank in it. And I mean, you know, so much of that I, I turn away anymore just because usually it's it's not just one thing. It's multiple things you got going on there. And you can't, uh, I don't do a good enough job explaining to the customer ahead of time to, to maybe even sell the job properly if i could if i could explain truly what needs to be done i don't think i'd have a problem getting the money but um i get frustrated um you know i only have so much patience i try to be a patient person i want to be polite uh and understanding and listen but also i get fed up it's like man i could talk to you 20 minutes and you still don't have a clue what i'm talking about <laughs> ah man it's just yeah. it's not good um sean how long have you been doing mobile stuff um, so I started in the summer of 18, uh, very infrequently, and then it's kind of ramped up since then. And I, I teach during the school year. So nine months out of the year, and then I'll do it in the afternoons and on, on a little bit on the weekends. Ah. So, um, it's, it, it's not a full-time gig by any means. I just, I really enjoy it. So I keep doing it and it helps me in my teaching so that I can stay up on stuff. Um, but this, this summer, um, for sure, like it was a full-time job and now like today was my first day back at school. So I've had to tell a bunch of shops no today, like 
Yeah, sorry. Right. I have I have this much time now every day, and I was looking into hiring somebody, and just I had a bunch of other stuff that went on this summer, so I couldn't do it. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's it, it's so challenging to do this job, honestly. Um, some days, like you say, you program and it's easy and everything kind of works, but those that's not every day. Um, but there's so much challenge to it, and I don't know. I actually really enjoy it. Maybe not in the moment, but at the end of the week, looking back, I'm like, this is a very satisfying job, but I don't know. That's this kind of person I am. I don't know. I, I don't want a boring, monotonous job, I guess. I, I, I want something, something that challenges me. Um, and there's, there's plenty of that in this job for sure. Oh, for sure. Mobile is just, uh, I mean, you know, yeah, any technician, in any shop's going to have opportunity to learn and grow all the time. But when you go mobile, I mean, you're, it's like hyperdrive, man. It's like, <laughs> you know, um, it really puts you to the test. I know, uh, you know, trying to make videos and stuff like I do sometimes. And Tommy, I think you you put together some stuff and case studies. Boy, that makes you learn. The one thing I love about doing videos, and this is almost embarrassing, but hey, I got a lot of stuff that's never made it to YouTube or never made it anywhere because I'm I'm looking like man. If these people only knew the the, the route I took uh, off of step one, this is embarrassing or whatever. I didn't put it up there. Now I'm looking back and saying, wishing I had a lot of that footage because I can learn from it. But putting together a story to show people what the step by step was, it's a, it makes me learn and grow um, more advanced uh, than I have before. Uh, there's another mobile guy in Cleveland and. He's been expanding, doing his little thing too. And uh, I told him that, I mean, we talk, you know, we may be competitors or whatever, but we're still cool, we're friends. And I told him, I was like, listen, you wanna become a better technician. You know, you're doing all this stuff for body works, body shops, just pretty much strictly programming, a little bit of ATIS and he does this and that. I'm like, okay, you wanna really get better at diagnosing? Just film yourself, just take your cell phone and film like step-by-step, step, you know, little snippets and piece it together at the end of the day. Don't even have to share it with anybody. Just put it together to see if you can make the story tell to yourself. And you're going to look at that and be like, why didn't I do this first? Why didn't I do that first? Or, why, mm -hmm. you know, what am I doing? This is silly. I should have thought about the problem like this. Um, stepping back and looking back at, at the uh, big picture is really fun. Uh, I enjoy that part of it. Yeah, it's easy to just fly through everything in a day if you actually do make some notes and document stuff and then look back on it. Um, yeah, like you said, you can learn a lot of uh, what could I have done better here? How could I have streamlined this more? Where did I screw up? What I miss or what I maybe what I do good, right? Like, oh, that was that was efficient. What I did there, I need to bottle that and apply it to other areas. So it it's it's a little time consuming in the moment to maybe take screenshots or videos or whatever. But look on looking back on that stuff it actually it helps anybody out. You don't even have to put it up. You just you know do it for yourself. You know, like Tommy said about just uh, tracking his. I think he said a friend asked him how how much time does he spend on a phone a day. Um, well, just tracking that. I mean, even that little thing, that's like just documenting part of your day. And you're like, oh, whoa, you know, if I could mm -hmm. only either charge for this or make this, you know, turn, turn this into something that's going to provide something on the back end longer down the road, um, makes a huge difference. Um, I was just, uh, I think we were talking earlier about flow charts or something like that. And I had a, had a, uh, oil pressure or oil pressure solenoid code on a, a four, three Chevy, like a 14 Silverado. And uh, the flow chart, I, I don't know. I don't really, I didn't, I barely, I grazed through a flow chart. I, I wasn't sure how the system worked, but the big thing to me is look at a diagram. If I can look at a wiring diagram, most times, oh, look, it's a solenoid. It's got power going to it with the key on, ground side controlled by the PCM. I'm going to test it my way. Um, I'm not saying that my way is always the best way or whatever, but usually I can get to the conclusion faster or more efficient than that flow chart. I can tell you that right now. They'll have you, you know, disconnecting the PCM and open wires and stuff. It's like, come on now. Um, we're, we're better than that. I think most technicians are, um, and that's a beautiful thing about being a technician is trying to you know, be a problem solver. What's the problem? How are we going to go about diagnosing it and solve it? You know? Yeah. Y using some critical thinking skills. And then what do you guys think about like time management as far as being mobile? Did it really change for you? being a technician or a shop owner and then going to mobile is it is it different or are you utilizing the same time management strategies you did as a tech like for me on flat rate i know i use this a lot of the same ones i do doing mobile stuff i i really don't have a lot of issues with time management my issues are traffic management oh okay like so the other day i was at a shop and I had like a 30 minute window because originally it was just for a CVT 
uh, solenoid strategy right. 20 minutes, you're in and out. So they, the shop, I guess, was like a type of barber shop set up where they had the stalls were rented out to different mechanics or whatever, and they had their own little businesses there. So one of the guys walked in and he's like, "Hey man, you program?" I was like, "Yeah." I was like, hey man, can you program this Cam this Camaro? You need to. I have the PCM. It's a new one from GM. I just got it right now. I was gonna wait for somebody else, but if you're here, you want to do it. I said, uh, "Man, if I if I if I do that, then I'm stuck in traffic." So I'm like, "Ah, eh, but I'm already here, man. So another 150. That's 300 bucks. Screw it, whatever, man." So I did it. Uh, pour on PCM, go to start it so I can do the, uh, it was a 2010 Camaro 6.2, uh, or whatever the hell engine is it in that hunk of junk, um, the SS one, uh, I go to try to start it to do the, the variation learn, and it doesn't start, so I, I, I talk to him, I'm like, hey man, like, so what's going on here, and he's like, oh, um, uh, I, it has this circuit code for the camshaft, and the car doesn't start, I'm like, well, it's still not starting, man, and <laughs> it still has the code, so, <laughs> I can't finish the job, but either way, you know, it's this much, and he, you know, he pays me, he's just like, man, well, at least I know it's not the computer that's bad, I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a good way of looking at it, <laughs> and he goes, then the other guy that I went with, he's like, hey, man, he does Diag, why don't you uh, have him check it for you, he's like, oh, you do Diag, he's like, well, how much, I'm like, well, it's 150 to start, and he's like, okay, do it, and 10 minutes later, I suspect a broken crankshaft, I mean camshaft, it's, it, had, it's something, it was something mechanical. My RC test was just, had four dead cylinders or something happened. This, the engine, it blew up, basically. I don't like going in cylinder and telling them, oh, number number five exhaust valve broke and it's floating. Nah, man, you need an engine, bro. It's mechanical. Tear it apart or put another one in it. That's your, that's your diagnosis. So that took me about, let's say, 30 minutes or so with the talking and all this other stuff. Um... Because I took that extra, let's say, what, 30, 45 minutes, it took me an hour and some change to get home. Oh, geez. So that's my problem. Like, that's why I, I look at I look at jobs now. But I was already there, and, I mean, I was there for, like, a little over an hour, and I made 450 bucks. You know, so it was kind of worth it, but then the hour and some change that I lose is what pisses me off. Yeah. I, I get that a lot, too, where shops will, I'll be there for something, and they're like, oh, yeah, we got another one for you to look at, and... You know, depending on the day, okay, yeah, I'll look at it, but maybe I got my whole fi schedule filled. And it, it kind of sucks because, yes, I am there and I drove all the way. Maybe it's 30 minutes to a shop and it would be great to knock out two at once. But I wish you would have told me ahead of time and I could have scheduled because now I got to say no and come back. Um, so that, that definitely is a challenge when they spring that on you. I think uh, time management is definitely a, a huge, huge part of being mobile. Um, it, it's it's giant. I mean, it, it's a you know, first of all, if you if you have business to do or work to do, you got jobs lined up. That's great. You can put them in schedule and kind of line them up the way you think is best or whatever or whoever priority is. Um, but also time management, I think of in another way too. When when you have that downtime, I mean. Um, most most businesses don't market enough and you know some do some don't some have other things to say about it that's okay whatever but um there's always something to be doing um that or that you can do uh you know or even just taking a little time off if you're one of those guys like some of the mobile guys are i have my moments too where it's like i kick it hard six days a week sometimes man you know if i get if i have a, a day where i can spend half a day just chill at home just take a little bit i mean a little bit of a breather and catch back up that's good but um, I fill a lot of my time with other things, but the time management thing that I get frustrated with is um, I was a flat rate technician almost my whole career. The last job I had before I went mobile, I technically uh, I was not flat rate, but I had a guaranteed wage, which is very, very low. I mean, I couldn't even support my family on, and then I got a paid X amount per hour for all my billable hours. So it was like flat rate. Um, and you know, I kind of operate my brain in that way. Everything I do, even my wife probably gets mad because I'm always thinking about a process. Okay, if I'm going to do this, this, and this, what's the most logical way to get this thing done the quickest, right? Uh, that's how I operate in my brain. And it, it's just kind of carried over into everything I do. It's mobile. Um, I get frustrated. There's so many shops out there that have a lot of hourly employees, I guess, or hourly technicians or whatever. And I mean, I'm telling you, they'll be, I'll be like, oh, hey, you know, let's. I'm working with a technician and I'm like, oh, we got to take this air box and take this and that off. And then they go get their quarter inch ratchet. I'm like, yeah. 
Yeah. I'm like, come on, man. I mean, I get Milwaukee. You know, I'm zip, zip, zip fast. Let's get it done. Um, but there are, I mean, there's plenty of shops, at least in my area, where they're still straight up old school, which, you know, it's all right. I mean, I, I, it is what it is, but it's like, I think I get frustrated when I, I know there's a way to do something so much faster um, yeah. and, and it, it's just not being done. And I work with a lot of technicians where a lot of shops are paying me to um, kind of like go and diagnose a job, but also they, they'll set, send a technician with me. That's I'm telling them, hey, I'll, you know, hey, you want to work with me? I'll charge you a little bit more, but it won't be much more. But that way I want to take whatever I'm doing and show your technician what's up and, you know, tell my thought process. And sometimes I get these guys that um, I don't know, I don't know, think they're trying to be a know-it-all or whatever, but it's like almost like they want to tell you how, how to do whatever. And it's like, you know, so many technicians get so excited when they can jump or a starter relay. Look, it cranks, it cranks. Okay, well, that okay the starter's good we know that certain the solenoid circuit's good from the relay down but did you check codes yet well no okay well we got to check codes well that takes a while yeah sure whatever <laughs> and we can hang starters or hang whatever you want on it all day long here too um they just don't um some some guys don't have that uh or should i say some technicians don't have that uh strategy in their head and i'm trying to work on teaching that uh i mean and it's a hard thing to teach i mean I guess you said, uh, Sean, your critical thinking or uh, problem-solving skills. Um, mm -hmm. I think that comes so much into understanding how a system works. And, you know, you, you got cars that are 15 years old and the guys still aren't plugging in a scan tool to check for codes. I'm like, come on, man. It's ego, man. That's all it is. It's ego. Oh, what does he have that I don't have? You know, it's just, it's just that. Like, I had, man, I was in a bad mood, man. It was, it was just a terrible day. And I show up to the shop and... I was just playing with the uh, with the Ultra. Literally, just got it. I think it was the second or third time I, I played with it, and it was a it was a no com. So I wanted to check out that uh, the data the data bus analyzer tool. Um, and I'm about to plug it in, and the guy comes up to me and he's just like, "Oh, so I think it's this." I said, "All right," and and you know I did this, I did that, and I'm like, "Okay, okay." All right, like I'm just ignoring him, and I guess he just starts getting like he starts feeling some sort of way that I'm ignoring him, and he's like, "Man, if I had that scan tool, I think I could, I can fix it." So, I grab the tablet. All right, fix it, bro. I'll stand right here, and then I just look at him, and he looks at me. He's like, "No, I gotta go to do an oil change." I said, "Exactly," <laughs> and grab my shit, and I went back to work. Like, just like, dude, like. Like you said earlier, I don't have an exhaust shop. I don't have a, a hot rod shop. I don't know anything about hot rods. I don't know how to weld. I don't care. I like guess it's, it's so what? You couldn't fix this car. Who cares? Like what's the what's the problem? You want to figure it out? Figure it out on your own time then. Like it's just it's just ego, man. That's it, it, what it comes down to at the end of the day. And some people just feel defeated by it, and some people just can't get it through their through their heads that it doesn't matter man as long as the car is fixed and it's out your shop who cares yeah i know there's a lot of guys out there that you know it's their it's their chosen profession this is what they went to school for they're doing it and then somebody else is coming in and you know doing their job for them so i i, I guess i get it from that perspective how I, I would i know if i was a tech in a shop i would have been like I would have been fired up about that, but what I would have done is gone home and study and be like, okay, what am I missing? What do I need to get better? People don't, what? and then they get the same result over and over again. You know what I mean? What does he, you know, like Tommy said, what does this guy know that I don't know? I, I, I have to tell you, I, I, I would kind of get, I think I'd be frustrated. I'd probably be like, wait a minute. When I, when I, in my area, when I started mobile, there was nobody mobile. There were, but there were never big. They never made it big, and they never had come to the shops I worked at. Never seen them, so um, you know that 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 would have fired me up too. Speaking of the time management, I mean, you can see this, but I'll make sure you can hear this. Hold on, let me see. Maybe you can hear it. Okay, <laughs> I hope. You see, I wear the dorky Timex watch. My customers know. I walk through the door, they hear beep. They hear the beep. I, I make it obvious. I don't want to sound like a jerk, but I make sure they know because. There's been too many times where I don't know how much time I got into something. I'm like, well, I think I got here at 10:30, and you know, whatever. 
And, you know, I'll be honest with you, I answer a couple phone calls most times, you know, in the middle of something. Sometimes I don't, but, um, you know, I, I keep a stopwatch going, and there's there's my time. Look, I was here one point, or I was here an hour and 20 minutes or whatever. So, you know, hey, I'll charge them 1.25. That's good enough, close enough for me, right? And uh, there, there are usually no problem with it. I found it since I started using my stopwatch to actually time myself, um, you know, I'm getting paid more. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, keeping track of that because it used to be a long time ago. Uh, well, actually, most of my any of my programming work generally it's a flat fee. I don't, you know, it's going to be X amount per this job. I roll up there, I take care of it, and if it takes me, you know, 20 minutes, or if it takes me 10 minutes, or if it takes me 45 minutes, well, it's whatever I quoted you. That's why I stand by. Um, but for the diagnostic stuff, it's X amount for the first hour and this much per hour after that, and I make sure I get that. Yeah, diag, diag is a, is just, it's just not easy to charge sometimes, man. No matter what you do, or sometimes you just get your butt kicked. And um, but definitely, I, I'd say the best advice from the mistakes that I've made: stick to your gun, stick to your game plan, and stick to your pricing. Yeah, there's gonna be a bunch of people out there cheaper, man. Like a bunch, and that's one of my. That's why I don't get programming. I, I, my dealer is not cheap around here. Like. Last time before the strike, is my, my General Motors dealer right now is closed. Um, yeah, my closest one. The last time I checked, they were a hundred and eighty-two dollars out the door for a programming event or one-hour job. Wow. That's that's you know um, their labor hour plus the <clears throat> part like the, the service charge or whatever the hell the shop charge so shop fee. Um, so roughly all the dealers in Chicago are about one hundred eighty dollars to one ninety an hour. So you know that's what they charge, and I'm like GM. I'm I'm right now. I'm pretty much 150. Everything American except certain year Chrysler's, it's like 200 bucks for Chrysler. Um, so I'm definitely like not one of the cheaper ones. But then they got guys running around with a couple Altos that do keys for 40 bucks, and they do actually most of the quote unquote programmings. And so I don't get a lot of those. It's it's mainly like I only get programmings honestly when it's part of a diag. He's like, oh, you're already here. Can you program this computer for me? Okay. Oh, all right, cool. Because I'm just right here and I can do it right now. You know, before we got the some guys part, running man, around that still have the old died, TIS man. computer disc, you know, the old uh, whatever, the CD. And then, you know, they'll, they'll do the program. <laughs> no, they'll do it 75 <laughs> bucks. I'm like, whatever, dude. You're killing yourself. Why do that? And then, um, of course, I'll get called out. Well, we got this 2009. He couldn't do it. I'm like, well, yeah, he doesn't have, <laughs> you know, he doesn't have anything legit, man. Come on. You know. <clears throat> dude i had a guy and this is a really funny story i have a buddy that works at at, at my gm dealer a very cool dude we went to high school together we're, we're we're close we're good friends and um i go to a a couple shops and i get calls and i just started noticing this pattern that i would get a lot of gm calls when he wasn't when he was out of town but i never put two and two together because he never told me he was going out to shops Right, and they're like, "Oh no, man, this guy's charging me a hundred dollars. He's just out of town." I said, "Well, it's forty bucks for GM, man. I gotta at least make a hundred dollars. I'll do one because, like I said, you know, I'm usually like one forty, one fifty. So, I mean, I'll, I'll do one forty. I mean, that's best I can do. And um, I'm not man, I'm just gonna wait till he comes back. Okay, I mean, and then like I found, I find out like we're over at his house for dinner, and then he just, you know, oh yeah, no, I charge a hundred bucks. I'm like." Hey man, you're the fucking asshole running around charging a hundred dollars for GM, dude. You're an idiot. And he's like, "Ah, oh, but it's just an easy hundred dollars." This is not, dude. Like you don't really realize that you're you're devaluating yourself, man. How many do you do a week? I don't know, five. Okay, so every two weeks you're doing ten, right? Yeah. I'm like, charge one forty. He's like, that's four hundred dollars you're losing out on. He's like. But what if they say no? Yeah. I'm like, they're not going to say no, dude. What are they going to do? Go to the dealer? <laughs> you know, Tommy, you just said you it before. Do uh, stick anyway. into your guns. You know, say what you do, do what you say, and stick to it. That's that's a huge thing. Early on, I I was too uh, flexible, um, too, too stupid. Yeah, I mean, you could say that. That's, I, I got no problem with that because I would, uh, you know, yeah. I, I got the bright idea. I think I told some of the other guys to do like an $87.50 GM programming. Like it was a coupon postcard, one-time deal to get new customers. Boy, that, I mean, I got some new customers, but I got these customers, some of them wanted a deal every time. 
well, you did it once for this. I'm like, and this was, of course, before the VIN subscription. This was 11 years ago. So, um, yeah, th you st stick with your guns, man. And, I mean, it's it's really hard when you're starting out because, you know, sometimes you're hungry. You, you can't, some money's better than no money, right? And then, but the only problem is, is you aren't going to be able to ever up that and get what you need to out of it. I mean, um, recently I just had a little bit of a restructuring with a few things with on my end, just increasing prices a little bit. Not, you know, because now I'm spending literally, I don't know, I think I'm spending 8 to $120 more a week now in fuel than I was before for my van. So I got, I have to. Sure. Fuel's going up. I mean, shit. Fuel's going up. And that's one of my biggest problems too with mobile. My best customers are all over the fucking place. Oh, like, I mean, rough. I got to go an hour in each direction to go to my good shops. Yep. Like all the shops around here in the city, man, most of my, most of my customers, they fucking suck. I go because like I said, usually it's a broken wire or something dumb and it's easy money. That's the only reason why I go. Yeah, Other I have, that, uh, man, I I, we covered a pretty large area, area uh, <clears throat> earlier by myself. I covered a good size area and then I added more, uh, <laughs> added another technician to my team and then, then we expanded and everything else. But we were covering a large area. I mean, you know, like an hour, hour each direction. You know, we Cleveland well, in Chicago. You got the lake to what the east. Uh, Cleveland, we got the lake to the north. Okay, so you, you know that's our border. But you know, we we're going an hour that way, an hour that yeah. way, and an hour that you know south. I and mean, we covered a huge area, um, and that was good with multiple people. But depending on the size of your operation, if you're a one man show, uh, that's a lot of windshield time that doesn't pay. Dude, I went from. I went to do a, a VSP uh, for 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 one of the Pedros on the south side, Blue Blue Island. So I went. I actually went to Lansing first to a shop to do a, a GM program. I was filling in for the other Pedro. I went to to Blue Island to help that other Pedro out, and then from there I went to the east side of Chicago, like the southeast side of Chicago. From there, and then from there I went to the one of the western suburbs by my shop so literally like it was an hour to get there and it was 20 20 minutes to get to the shop it was 35 minutes to get to that other shop and then an hour to get to the oh, other yeah. shop and then an hour to get back to my shop an hour you know, and 20 uh, to get talking back to about that type of driving and time management something that i i realized and i i still don't put into play like i should is that, you know, I spent, a, if you look back at, at your week, okay, and you look at all the driving you did in one week, and it's like, man, if I would have been able to take my week and cut it in half and have, you know, cut the week in half and then just line up each job, because I pass the same shops 15 times, seems like sometimes, I mean, it's no joke, back and forth and back and forth, and I found out that, um, you know, I had a, my grandfather was sick many years ago before he passed, and uh, he was in the hospital a few times, um, and, you know, whatever you got to do what you got to do take some time off and you know take care of family right take some time off phones ringing off the hook this is when i was uh, on my own i didn't have anybody else working i'd let basically every hour or so i'll go check all my voicemails write down the stuff call them back basically say hey i'll get to you in the next two days i don't know here's my situation i found that probably about 75 percent of the people would wait okay and then 25 percent of the people wouldn't wait wait 25 percent of the shops would not wait and they would actually you know, say, oh, I'm going to go take it to the dealer. And then, you know, I come back and I'd be passing that shop. Oh, let me just turn in there and see if they got that taken care of. And then I go in there and they're like, yep, the car's still at the dealer. I'm like, well, here I am. You wouldn't wait for me. <laughs> and, and the dealer won't take care of them in that way. So, but what I found <laughs> out by that is I could line up my work. Um, and I, I, this was early on. I found I could get more work done in one day if I just, you know, basically schedule out one or two days you know book them what's most convenient for me boom i can crank out a lot of work um literally almost doing double what i do in a day in one day i'm like this is good so uh it makes a big difference too much of my time is that's, still running around i mean like um, you know i still get calls uh i think my day was pretty much scheduled for the day going into it um except for one job the last job of the day um, but usually I spend too much of my time chasing, like I'll go drive, like Tommy said, I'll drive an hour over here to drive back over here to get a call to go back over there at the end of the day. And I'm like, oh man, that's a lot of time. I mean, I don't travel nearly as much as I used to, but, um, there is a lot of windshield yeah. time for mobile. Um, you know, if you, if you look back at the end of the day, 
many times I'm like, yeah, I should have just told those people I'll be by there tomorrow uh, or the next day or whatever. But sometimes they'll wait, sometimes they won't. One thing I found out is most of the cars that I'm dealing with won't start, so they probably aren't going to tow it. So <laughs> it, it, it'll be there. It'll be waiting. <laughs> That's maybe not. Yeah, it's one of those things. I, I almost wish I uh, had like a freaking uh, autopilot vehicle that could drive me <laughs> from place to place because you could actually get some work done in between these because, uh, yeah, you spend half an hour just driving, and I, I try to make it productive. With, oh, I you know, watching a, or listening to a video or a podcast or whatever, but it it does add up at the end of the day. And yeah, if you could if you could make your day a geographically aligned, so you just hit up you know shops as you go direction, really? but it just never seems to work out that way. But I I think if you put some intent behind it, uh, you could probably. And that's make the it thing, being like intentional about, about it. But then I'm like, oh, I'm standing around doing nothing today. Or, you know, it's ten in the morning, and I only did one job. I need more work, so then I go chase after it. Then then, then I find out I'm in the same same neighborhood I was. You know, the, the next day I'm like, oh man, a lot of a lot of time like that. A lot of windshield time. I, I end up trying to take my little end of day video thing I do. I, I try to film that in my car, and then um, if I have enough time, if it's not too late in the evening, I'll actually edit it in my vehicle. Um, not driving, by the way. I'll edit it, but then I'll render it while I'm driving, and that, that saves a few minutes, you know, here or there. I mean, no, it doesn't take long. It's short videos, or I'll upload it as I'm driving too. Um, you know, burning up the the, the Wi-Fi, but but you know, there's a lot of things you try to do to to make it worthwhile. Oh, yeah. um, when I had the younger guy that started with me at the time, he, um, boy, that was that was awesome because he he could drive and I could do other work. I'd handle the phone and do the scheduling or, or vice versa. Um, boy, it was nice to have an mm. apprentice. Um, but he came, like I said, he became a full-blown technician um, and was just, you know, rocking, rocking his way around other experienced technicians in no time. But uh, he had an attitude. He wanted to learn. He had a technical problem-solving background from the... Uh, uh, computer networking field to kind of you know two different things but yeah same stuff in a way so so you just got to figure out what an uber driver makes and then pay them a little bit more and they can drive you around all day and you can get work done oh, it's, it's true i mean think shop. about that or, or even if you know what the problem is at the next shop hey i know i got such and such code or some communication problem you could you could have your diagrams all bookmarked yeah. ready to go man you develop that game plan um you know, I, I don't know how long it takes other technicians. I, I, I don't have anybody to compare to because I work by myself right now. But, you know, many times it takes me, it might take me 15 minutes to, you know, get a game plan together. I mean, you know, I'm unloading the car, you know, I, I get set up my little computer and I get my U-scope out. I see what's up or do I need a Pico for whatever I'm doing? Uh, what's my process here? But usually after, if I don't have a solid game plan in 15 minutes uh, in some sort of direction on which way I'm going with something, I'm usually not happy with where I'm at as far as my time management on site. Um, that's that's how I feel about it. I mean, it might take me forever. I had one this afternoon. I had my game plan, but execution was a hard thing. You know, I was like, man, I can't get this stupid connector done on this uh, on this uh, GM I was working on. I mean, I, I fought with this connector for probably 10 minutes and ended up breaking a little tab off of it. But, well, it's unconnected now. Um, we know what the problem is. It'll snap back on, but the CPA is <laughs> busted. But... I mean, you know, you, you have a plan, you try and execute it. I, I was initially going to go to the ECM and do some testing there, but I don't know what it is about this 4.3 and the 14 silver routers. No, there's not a lot of room to wrestle that computer around to a way that you can have it still plugged in and actually uh, get in there and do some testing. I was kind of disappointed in that, but um, yeah, ex having a plan, executing it, and then I guess being flexible when it doesn't go as planned. You know, okay, now what? Okay, what's plan B? Um, that's, that's our game. <laughs> The only, I don't know about you, Brian, but the only regret I don't have is my equipment. There hasn't been really anything that I bought that I haven't made money on. There's been a couple of tools that has been a little slower, but so I think I shared this in another podcast, man, but all of my tools that I got at the beginning, man, were all used. I got a used MDI. I found the used VCM1. I scored a used Micropod 2 from eBay. Um, you know, and, I, and it's, there's nothing... There's nothing wrong with it. And honestly, I feel like starting off, you're better off trying to find little deals like that and, and using original equipment 
I think it looks a little bit better. Oh, you absolutely. Come in with a little bit more confidence that something goes goes wrong at game end. I'm using the factory tool here, like it's your car is just a piece of shit. <laughs> you know, like stuff, you know, stuff like that. I think that was one of the the best things that I did was not spend. I mean, I scored my MDI one for three hundred bucks. My VCM was like three fifty. You know, that's right, Tommy. The, the uh, um, having having the factory equipment is something I prided myself on early on with my first my first business uh, started. Um, I started with the J box. I won't lie. I, all, I straight up had a J box, a Snap on. Uh, I think it was a Solus. Yeah, Snap on Solus Pro. I think I had my J box. I had my little fluke meter. I didn't have a scope. I mean, and I started. It didn't take me long to realize. Yep, I need to get myself a Tech Two like right now because I, you know, there's certain things I wasn't. I'm not saying to the Snap. I can't remember what it was. There's a few things a Snap on scanner at the time wouldn't do, and um, doing some. Uh, uh, legacy path through programming, which sometimes you get stuck and have to do. I had to have it, and then I ended up buying a, a used VCM one off of an X Ford Tech that got a VCM, just one of VCM two, just brand new came out. He sold me his VCM one, so uh, that worked out. So I got factory IDS then instead of using FMP, which uh, that's what Ford uh, J Box stuff used to be. It was FMP, um, and then uh, Chrysler. Um, it didn't take me long to realize, okay, i got to step up and get the uh, Y-Pod or whatever because I was just doing the legacy, just the J-Box programming. Yeah, but. I'd rather poke my eyeballs out than use the legacy, dude. <laughs> or use nerves. That's why I didn't – you know what's funny is that was the one tool that I said, man, i got to buy it. i got to buy it, right, the, con the consult VI. But then somebody said there's a new one coming. I said, all right, I'm going to wait. And then, you know, stuff happens or whatever. I'm like, oh, maybe I can find the used one. Nothing. Man. I finally said, you know what, screw it, because I, I was getting at least one call a week minimum. Sometimes oh, yeah. you have two calls on, you know, real-wheel drive programming, Nissan. I'm like, you know, I'm not messing with nerds, dude. I don't have the time or the patience. Something goes south, especially like a, it was mainly calls for transmissions, for real-wheel drive transmissions. I was, I'm telling you, I was getting one or two a week. I buy this friggin' tool, dude. I literally got my first call for it. I, in one day, I got a call for two real-wheel drive transmissions. <sighs> right. A year to the date that I bought it. Wow, jeez. I bought my console three date. plus. I, I paid out the nose. I think it was seventy five or seventy eight hundred dollars uh, with the security. Oh, well, uh, you bought it with the that? with the CF nineteen. Oh yeah, that, that's the only way they'd sell it to you, you six years ago. I, I paid full boat. I mean, that was 70, Whoa. I think with a VSP security card, it was 7,800 nice. bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it was 75, I don't remember, but it wasn't cheap. But I got a, it paid for itself in six months. I mean, we, yeah. you know, I was getting enough calls. I had enough training shops and, you know, those rear wheel drives were a pain. And of course the P0101 on the Altimas and Sentras or whatever, I can't remember, uh, some, one of those models had, I mean, I made so much money on those, it was great. But uh yeah, yeah, you know, the tooling, I don't know. It's like a double-edged sword. I mean, I, I love it. I mean, I'm a gizmo gadget freak, freak right? I like I like PicoScope. I like, you know, having this. Yeah. I got the other PicoScope over there. I mean, I love love that stuff, the U-Scope. I just got that Auto Pro Pad. I think it's oh, Auto Pro Pad or Auto Pad Pro, whatever they call it. But that, I don't even, no, not the new one. I got the, the, the pro one, I don't know, it's two grand or whatever, but you know, I got that. I'm having fun time with it because it's like, man, this thing just works. Oh, it's cool. fast. I mean, turn that thing on, hit a couple buttons, keys are program, I'm done. Um, you know, all the equipment I have pays for itself. I mean, if you talk about regrets, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, not to get all mopey with people, but regrets is I got a daughter that's 12 years old and I started this business when she was one. And I can honestly tell you, I can't remember three, four, five, or six. I mean, that that's. That's what the mobile business did to me. That's a true thing, and you know, it's it's that's not upbeat or nothing. I don't, you don't have to share it if you want to, Sean. But it's the truth. I mean, I really, I I sacrificed a lot to get that business going that I had. I, I put everything I had into it, and um, it's 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 uh it's a tough one, man. I I think I'm I think it's a blessing for me that I don't have a family, man, and I have a wife who's busy as busy as I am, so it's. It's pretty good. Like I mean, I I can be out nine ten o'clock at night and it's whatever. I, I my that's my advantage. I just don't have enough work. Like if I have to work, man, I don't give a shit. Like I'm okay with with actually putting in the work. I'm just not not busy enough. I'm actually considering kind of like 
you know, moving, not moving, not moving here. I can't leave at this point, but I, uh, well, I think I'm scouting in different areas is a great thing. Areas, um, you know? any chance, okay. I mean, yeah. I did, I, you know, we were talking about time management. When I hired that one guy to work with me back in the day, I mean, and this was a long time ago, we had slow days. I mean, every day he, I, we meet up and ride along together. And I taught him for like two or three months. Like I bought second set of equipment for GM and Ford. And I think yeah, GM and Ford, that's all he could do. And then it got to the point, sometimes we're busy and we'd split up. And I, I was like, this is sweet. You know, he's out making money. I'm out making money. Um, that was great. But then we still had quiet times. And we literally, I, I, at this desk right here, I'd sit down with a phone book, uh, literally a phone book. You know, I get the Akron phone book, the old paper, and we're just going through, typing stuff into a database that I'm going to send every shop that's in the phone book a mailer. Because you go online, sometimes the addresses are skewed or whatever. Um, but we were just comparing back and forth. And I put all that extra downtime into marketing and trying to build that thing up. And I did direct mailing. Direct mailing was huge. But, Tommy, you should see you want to find the, the top shops that are, like, within 45 minutes from you. If you already, already have them as a customer, I would find a way to market to them, direct mail, um, stuff like that. I mean, I'm not saying that Midas is my best customer because they're kind of a pain. They hired a lower-end technicians in a lot of the stores, lesser qualified. But in Midas around here, one yeah. of the district managers happened just happened to be walking into one of the stores as the mailman came, and there's my flyer that I sent out. He called me and had a conversation with me, and that turned into you know a twenty-something thousand dollar a year account. I mean, it was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And I got in with Monroe and NTB and Mr. Tire. I don't know if the, which ones are uh, big in Chicago or where you guys live, but I mean, that's direct mailing stuff. In my opinion, even even mm -hmm. in 2021, still works. I don't do much of it because I don't. I I, I got to hire somebody. I either got to hire somebody to get to the next level, or I don't know. I mean, I really want to do more teaching and training. I mean, Sean, I don't know if you know, but Vision uh, 2020, March 6th, I think I had my first big break to do a little bit of a presentation in front of a bunch of people. And then I was like, sweet, this is awesome. And then COVID. <laughs> and then COVID came. So, oh. um, you know, I, I, I did that one. It was cool. But and then I, I enjoy teaching people. I mean, it's it's so cool when we get the chance to share uh, the little bit we know. I mean, I, I don't ever want I'm not a know it all, man. I mean, I got so much to learn. It's not even funny. But to take a simple concept that that I think is simple and try and explain it to somebody and help them understand it to make it simple for them. That's, that's fun. That That's the best part of my day. If I get to actually work with a, a technician that wants to learn something and, and I can show it to them and help them understand it. That's, that's the fun part, man. Um, so I kind of, I'm doing multiple things. I got that membership yeah. site I'm trying to work on and get some, uh, put some good information out there on YouTube and all that stuff. But that's a lot of work all by itself. Yeah. Hey, tell tell us about your website. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, it's handsonautotraining.com. We have uh, basically it's a website with some free resources. It doesn't cost anything. You don't have to sign up to see some of that stuff. Um, I wish I could say I was better at keeping up on that part of the website, but I've been putting a lot of time, effort, and energy into the membership site, which um, I'm trying to keep it super cheap for technicians because most technicians can probably afford ten dollars a month for the core subscription. Um, you know, some of the material I put out there, uh, I charge a whole lot more to teach in person. I mean, I'm, you know, a large sum of money, but, uh, I feel there's such a need for the basic electrical and even the basic picoscope and more advanced stuff that stuff. I think technicians want to learn, but it's trying to find it all in one place where they can get it. I mean, um, mm -hmm. you know, this day and age, you know, there's more than one resource out there where you can get stuff from, whether it's YouTube or, you know, there's so many other cool, um, websites and people doing it. But I'm trying to put my spin on how I understand stuff and trying to share it the way I learned it, which fits for some people, doesn't fit for everybody, but for many people it may work. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's that. Sure. No, I, I I've been through a few of those videos and they're def they're definitely good. I haven't made through all the electrical ones yet, but uh, yeah. I, I hey, like thanks the stuff for checking you out. There. And it's you good. know, anybody has any comments, questions, or concerns, they can always uh, you know hit me up on the Facebook or whatever. Um, that's that's sure. Sure, sure way of getting it done. And, um, Tom, you're still doing a lot with Train by Tech still? Yep. We will be on tomorrow night, another live stream. I unfortunately missed the last one, but we're uh, we're trying to rip things up. Cool. We'll have some news I mean, for everybody know, coming one up. One of the things there. i got to say you know, about the, like I it. said, this day and age, there's so much good information and so many groups trying to help technicians. I mean, if you're a technician that wants to learn, I, I really feel that you're in a great 
great time. I mean, you know, a lot of people like me or whatever, you know, the internet was kind of in its infancy when I was uh, turning a wrench and, and, and learning. Uh, there was no YouTube or anything like that, or maybe, well, there was towards a, you know, and what, I don't even know when YouTube came out, but it wasn't like it is now. I mean, you type in a problem and it'll probably be up there. The funniest thing is sometimes I'll type in something, trying to figure something out, and I forget that I already made a video on it. That's like a kick in the pants. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> well, why is my video coming up here? <laughs> oh, I, I did. Who, who's I this did, dark making this, this video? <laughs> what is I mean, he that, that's about? how you know you're slipping, guys. When you, oh man, <laughs> it, it happens. It happens. But yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that's pretty much. I mean, it's. I think it's great, man. I just. I I know half half of the most successful mobile guys rage quit a job. So it's it's definitely um. There, it's definitely it's definitely gonna suck for a while. There's no, there's no going around in any business. Like anytime you start yeah. any type of business, it's going to be difficult. Just biggest thing I can preach is discipline, budgeting. Yeah, you had a kick-ass week, dude, but it's it's not. They're not all the same, man. Especially when you're starting out, man. So budget your money. Talk to CPA. Get all your ducks in a row. Your taxes and everything. Um, you know, and and then you'll you'll be if you, if you're if you're disciplined when it comes. Because I remember my my. I'm finally now listening to shit that my old man said that he, now that he's gone. And one of the things he said is like, the easy part is making it. The hard part is keeping it. Like, so that's probably my biggest regret is I, I never listened to that part. I was always able to work, but like budgeting my money and, you know, not wasting it on bullshit was, uh, was always a, a hard part for me. But, you know, that, that sometimes yeah, we live, we learn. I mean, that's a fact. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, just to, I guess if you're starting out mobile, just understanding that, you know, running a business is a little bit different than just, uh, getting a paycheck. Uh, some guys, uh, are comfortable with that. Others aren't, but you know, Hey, if you, you have a bad week and nothing comes in, well, you better not be spending anything or, or the kids are going to get skinny real quick. Yeah. Sick days, holidays, you know, you get hurt. I mean, I don't know how it is right. for different States, but I mean, unfortunately it's a weird thing if you're self-employed and, you know, something happens to you, it's like, well, workman's comp, yeah, right, Done. sorry about that, you know, you're on your own. Uh, you know, one of the things yeah. that, uh, I started on a shoestring, I really did, I'm, I'm very blessed that things worked out, and I busted my hump to make it happen, and, you know, it's not all me, I mean, I, I, I am ca counting my blessings in multiple ways that things fell into place for myself, but, uh, boy, I, I tell you, I look back, I'm like, I started out with X amount of dollars in a bank. If it did, you know, basically I said, if I can't make this work in two months, I gotta be able to at least start paying my mortgage and this and that and other thing in two months. And I, I did. I mean, I cooked it hard. Um, I mean, pushing hard, uh, marketing and knocking on doors, literally just nonstop driving, nonstop knocking on doors every day when I first uh, started out on my own. I mean, I did have a little bit of shops ahead of time when I did start. Uh, I was kind of moonlighting, if you will, as you know, before work I go out and do a program, and after work I go out and do a program. You know, not all the time. It only happened, to, you know, every now and then. But, uh, you know, then the phone started ringing in the middle of the day. I'm like, hmm, what's this? Oh, and, you know, I can't be talking on my phone. And uh, basically I had a conversation with my boss. He was a great shop owner. That's the guy who told me about that 15 commandments of peak performance and sales. He made the whole team listen to it. And that's what uh, made me realize, hey, I think I have more potential. I don't want to uh, basically... You know, don't want to go, go to the grave with this music left in my body or my soul or whatever that I want to be doing. I mean, I got, I got more to me than just working for this guy. Not to say that's a bad thing. I mean, you know, if you're working, supporting your family, <clears throat> um, paying your bills and you, ha you have a good career, there's nothing wrong with it. Mobile's not for everybody. That's a fact. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it just isn't, but yeah. for some people, I think they can really excel. And I see other, other technicians that are mobile, man, they're killing it. And, they're, they're doing a good job and they're getting paid well for what they do and they're having a good time. I mean, how, how cool is that? Um, but you can also be at a shop and have a good time too, you know? Right. Well, and if you're at a shop, you can uh, leave it there. You can go home and forget about it. And then if you own your own business or you, you know, you're paying yourself, uh, you're yeah. always on, <laughs> you know? Uh, I don't know about you guys, but it's always on my mind. I've gotten better at, at blocking a little bit, you know, especially on a weekend. I really try not to get, I, I really try to isolate myself on a weekend, but man, 
I, if I got a problem card, it's kicking my rear end. I'm the type of guy I'll be down. I'll be here, you know, figuring out, reading description operation until 10 or 11 o'clock at night and then trying to do this and that. And I'm like, oh, you know, I, you know, I have a family and a wife and, uh, you know, all that stuff that needs to be uh, proper attention given to uh, as well. And it's, it's, uh, it's a tightrope balance walk. I don't think it doesn't matter what profession we're in. I think, you know, or what level, whether you own your business or not, or you work for somebody else. I think a lot of us are always doing that life work balance. There's a, there's a tightrope that we're always walking, um, trying to make sure we're doing it right. But you, you will definitely have the pole lean one way when you're on a tightrope. If you're a, uh, uh, self-employed, that's a no doubt about it. <laughs> it, it's fun, but That's for you know, sure. uh, I, I told my wife, Sean, I'd be talking to you. And I said, Hey, you should come down here and tell, tell, uh, Sean about the mobile business. And she, she declined. It probably, it wouldn't be pretty Tommy. Tommy might have to plug his ears. I don't know if he can handle it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah, I, I enjoy it, man. I really do. It's, it's nonstop learning and, uh, keep you on your toes. That, that's it. Um, yeah, I wish I'm trying to think what you were asking about other challenges or uh, things I wish I did different. Uh, I guess if I could do something different the first five years, I would have instead of putting the 100 percent that I put into it. Other people says uh, people say 110 percent, whatever. No, if I could have just instead of putting 100 percent of my effort and stuff into it, maybe 65, 75 percent and block off some more time for family because. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't care what point in life you're in, uh, every year that goes by, I think it goes by faster than the one before that, and it just doesn't stop. So, um, you know, it's important oh, yeah. to, yeah, take the time 100%. to enjoy, uh, you know, all the other things. There's uh, more to life than, uh, you know, say, fixing a car, but also, hey, that's how I make my income. That's that's me, or, you know, or maybe that's my ego thing, right? That's what gets in the way of me. It's like, oh, I want to be the guy that, you know, is the guy that does this or whatever. But, you know, balance, man, it's tough. Yep. It, it is yeah. really challenging to balance that out. And, yeah, a lot of times when you realize it, it's a little too late. Um, yeah, I know, I know what yeah. what's, that's, that's all that's about. Uh, that, that is but, tough. Uh, and, um, yeah. You know, I guess part of what – well, I think about uh, things uh, – the, the revitalize me, you know, is, is, uh, you know, like I like going camping for a weekend or something like that. Go just get away. Like I will like going places. My cell phone doesn't work or I just flat out turn it off and it's, it's done. And I got friends that say, I try to call you. I can't get a hold of you. I'm like, man, the weekend, shoot, it was Saturday on the weekend. That thing went on mute. That's done. I'm not even answering that phone. Cause Sean, if you, you know, you're mobile and Tommy, you'll, you know, if your phone's not ringing yet, it will be. I mean, uh, that's, that's a fact. Um, one of the things I want to say that is very cool about mobile is the the push and the opportunity to grow. Like Tommy's doing more and more EEPROM stuff and getting into all – I mean, he's a, he knows what he's doing with a lot of this stuff, and it's pretty cool to watch people and know what they're doing. And I'm I'm trailing behind, picking up on some of the EEPROM stuff and learning this and that and other thing. But working for a shop, it just didn't – I don't think it's that profitable for somebody to put in that much time and effort to learn something. Uh, because you don't see it enough. You, you just, I mean, you know, so to no, do something you might see not. once every two years, it doesn't make any sense. Well, if I'm going to see this problem once every right. two months, well, now it's something I can uh, turn into a profitable venture for myself or my business. Um, that's that's what's cool about being mobile is, uh, you know, there's a lot of, I don't want to say things you can spend money on and toys and gadgets you can buy. But you can justify many of them, and, and it will. It is something that's going to turn a profit. It's not like, oh, look, I just bought this EEPROM thing, and I'm never going to use it. No, I'm going to figure out how this thing works, and I'm going to get in there and uh, start doing this. I, honestly, man, that tool for me was IO Terminal, man. I, I thought it was a – at first, I, I mean, I bought it, and I'm just like, man, why the hell do I need this? I mean, Global Aid modules are so cheap. You know why? The, why am I even wasting my time helping these people save money? But dude, it's been such a, a money maker for me, man. I, it's like I actually ended up. This might sound like a shameless plug, man, but I ended up scoring like forty different global aid uh, modules. I'll be man. buying so one for you guys. Are running into issues, man. Let me know. I can. Yeah. It's 
it's common it's common um you know something with io terminal tool and uh is uh you know just to be i mean i don't know if to be putting this on the internet or whatever sean but it's up to you figure it out but um you know just doing the isuzu mpr transmissions it's the gm tranny where i can't get the isuzu software you can't even buy the isuzu interface right now i was like oh i'm just gonna buy i'll buy isuzu medium duty uh, it's three grand or something 3200 bucks i have a customer who has a fleet of these things and he's working on them nonstop. i'm like hey for you i'll buy it i'll, I'll learn the software i'll be able to program blah 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 and i think it's three thousand it's like six thousand dollars a year to keep that thing alive it's not cheap but uh, Isuzu heavy medium duty. Um, wow. It's not cheap. I don't know what it is, but he's like, oh yeah, buy it, buy it. I'll, you know, you, you got enough work with me. <clears throat> and it turns around, turns out that I can't even buy the tools on back order at least until September. So that's why I got the IO terminal for that. I'm like, okay, I buy that thing. Boom. I mean, I'm that's shoot. I mean, it's gravy. I mean, easy money. And you know, I I'm when I say easy money. It's yeah. like I charged got eight hundred dollars the first one. He's happy. He thought that was a deal. <laughs> I'm like, it took me less time than doing a program on a GM, and I'm like, well, sweet, I got the day made now. Now it's all icing on top of the cake, you know? Yeah, I mean, and he's happy about that. He loves it. And awesome. IO Thermal's great. That's for sure. Yeah, it's like... You just, you just gave me another, another example. Um, some of you guys, if you're worried about going mobile, and if you're like... In, in between like a uh, working at a shitty shop and tired of wrenching or whatever whatever the hell reason you have do yourself a favor before you do that think about this take your monthly expenses everything uh food water snacks gas whatever blah 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 um and you divide it by the number of days you want to work and that would be your beginning goal number well, it's two or three hundred bucks, and then that's your that's your set. That needs to be your goal for the day. So you're out to, you're out on those streets hitting the pavement until you made your yeah, goal. Yeah, just uh, I, I, to add to what Tommy said, that's I like that idea. Um, and just go on top of that, figure out what your other expenses are. I mean, it's like hey, I mean, and business expenses. It's like okay, if you're buying service information from all that or Identifix, you know, you got to add that up and have a firm number in your mind. And I like to say. I base it on, I try to base my number on a 50, 50 weeks a year. So that makes it easy. Instead of trying to take that, and, you know, multiply this by whatever and divide it by whatever. No, I just go straight out. I figure out how much it is by per month, multiply that by 12, divide it by 50. And this is what I need per week. And on top of that, I'll break it down into days, you know, divide that by five. And now, now I got myself a pre-cooked in uh, two week vacation, which I never take. <laughs> I should take, but I don't. I'll take a couple days here and there, but, uh, you know, that's how I do it. And then you add that number to the number Tommy just said, and now here's your nut you got to crack. I mean, you have to get to this or else, uh, you know, you're not going to not gonna be doing well. I mean, it's a fact. Um, right. I, uh, I, I don't have any, you know, the overhead, in my opinion, for being mobile, like in my end, I, I have a vehicle I, I use. And, you know, of course, fuel has gone up significantly. So you got uh, the automobile fuel, um, my GM, Ford, and Chrysler. I pay all that stuff by the year. I mean, it's straight up because I do enough of it. It, ju it just makes perfect sense to buy the uh, annual subscriptions. And then uh, basically everything else, uh, yeah. any other subscription besides the all data and Identifix that I use, um, you know, are all kind of little things here or there. I mean, little tiny things. One big thing that people don't believe uh, or are surprised that are asking about mobile business that I pay is like I pay a large fee to be a member of a marketing group. It's a, other business owners, not mobile, not technicians, not automotive. I mean, I'm talking, we got, you know, there's hairdressers and chiropractors and attorneys and a bunch of other people in that, but it's all about marketing and dealing with people. And um, this is really cool to rub shoulders with other like-minded uh, maybe not like-minded in the sense that they can fix a car, but like-minded in the sense that they know what it's like, that if they don't produce something, they're not going to get a check. Um, you know, it's, uh, that's something I found very beneficial. There's all kinds of groups. There's BNI, which I was a part of one of those things, or I went to free meetings, but um, there's other mastermind groups, which are pretty cool. Um, and it takes time. That's, you talk about time. That's one thing that, uh, you know, I spend probably a full day a month uh, by the time I do some other stuff with the, those group. It takes a whole uh, maybe seven hours uh, out of my month uh, each month. But I feel that the return on the investment in myself 
is is well worth it if you know what i mean it it, it pays dividends especially when you're dealing with other people that step outside of your business and will tell you and sometimes you don't like to hear it either that's the hard part man talk about an ego i have that is the hard part when people tell me how to do something oh, wait, wait a minute you're not going to tell me but 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 it's true i mean i have to, I have to be open to that and <laughs> yeah. Um, one of those things, I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever watched some of the YouTube things or whatever, but they, these guys are the ones that told me, you got, you got so many subscribers, blah, blah, blah. You need to make a video every day. I'm like, a video every day? That's a lot of work, man. And they're like, no, get out there and do a video every single day. For, try it for two months and you, you tell us how, much, how many more subscribers you get and how many more views and how many more people uh, you know, uh, click on your thing or whatever. So we'll see if it works. It seems like it is, to be honest with you. I'm getting better at and even faster at editing. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. But yeah. <laughs> Any other questions, Sean? Any? Uh, I mean, did you have? Anything? I, I I think you guys covered it pretty well. <laughs> uh, There's a lot of good advice there. Uh, I'm oh, I'm stealing it's, some of that advice you know, for we, sure. <laughs> I mean, man. I, I I don't have anything to hide. I guess anymore. Is I mean, for so long I I ran my mobile business and. Uh, you know, there's competition and this and that at one time. And now it's like, you know what? I've, I'm lucky enough that I got to the point where, you know, I have a reputation of somewhat good standing, I feel. But uh, I, I'm, I don't want to say I'm leaning on that like a crutch, but it's like, hey, my goal is to do a good job. And if I can help somebody else do a good job too, like even these other guys that are uh, used to work for another company, and long story in my area. So there's some competition that's kind of like, I don't want to say hitting close to home, but I know who they are. It's like, hey, you know, we talk and, you know, talk about stuff and help each other out sometimes with uh, tough problems or even fill in on our job if somebody can't get somewhere fast enough, you know, if need be, um, that happens. Um, I, I don't have anything to, I, I don't think that I'm getting any but where by cutting throat in somebody else or cheating or, or uh, what are you, backstabbing or whatever. You know, it's not like that. You go much further in life helping other people out than you do uh, <laughs> cheating or whatever or beating them up. So... Yeah, I agree. Okay, that's going to do it for today's episode. I want to thank Brian and Tommy for taking the time to chat with me today. I uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, and I also want to thank everybody for listening and all the feedback I've been getting. It seems to be pretty consistent. Um, and I really do appreciate what everyone has to say. Other than that, let's get out there, start fixing the world one car at a time. <laughs>